Welcome, everybody. That's what it'll sound like. That's what it does sound like right now. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Adrift in Aldalore, our weekly actual play game of D&D, set in our homebrew world of Aradun. Uh, our music is licensed through musicbed.com. We use Bardly to share it amongst ourselves. Uh, and our ambiance when we use it is from Tabletop Audio and Sirenscape. Uh, but I'm going to bring everyone on screen now because we're missing our good right. friend Shannon. Yeah. Look at them. There they are. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is where I go into the announcements like Shannon normally would. Shannon will be back next week, folks. Uh, she is on a vacation this week. Um, all right. So uh, Arcane Spectacles is our first partner. Um Roll for initiative and check out Arcane Spectacles, your haven for all things TTRPG. Their personalized D&D-themed Christmas ornaments will be a critical hit under your tree, and their top-notch tabletop RPG accessories will give you an edge in battle. Customize their ornaments with your party's name to show off your adventuring party like never before. Don't miss out on your chance to level up your tabletop experience with Arcane Spectacles. Visit them at arcanespectacles.com. Next, we have Underground Oracle Publishing. They are a best-selling, any-nominated TTRPG publisher, building new and exciting things, specifically for the cipher system of every genre you can imagine. Each setting includes everything you need to explore its unique worlds, including lore, species, descriptors, foci, creatures, ciphers, artifacts, and all of the rules that you need to play. They have a few different uh, settings, like Harrow the Blighted Plain, a crystal punk fantasy setting, as well as a Wild Space, a science fantasy or science fiction uh, setting. For as little as $3, you can join their Patreon and help shape their worlds that they create. Next, we have Eddie York, Edward York. He is a character artist who is the artist for our character designs for this campaign and our last one. Uh, he's an illustrator based in the UK who makes art for games and books. To visit his portfolio and get in contact with him, visit eyork.com. Uh, next, we have 1985 Games. Uh, they create affordable, accessible, high-quality accessories for D&D and other tabletop role-playing games. I use their NPC cards, and they just finished a Kickstarter not too long ago for a new uh, setting. Um, but you can use Paradise Prod for 10% off your entire order with 1985 Games. Uh, if you're looking to catch up on all of the fun stuff that we do here in this campaign, you can read my recaps over on our Discord. They're one, all one page, and then get you caught up pretty quickly. Um, if you're interested in sponsoring an episode or two of Adrift in Aldalore, shoot us an email at paradiserpg at gmail.com, and join us at all the social medias, Blue Sky, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Discord, Instagram, TikTok, wherever. You can find us there. Posting stuff. <laughs> all right. Now that we've told you about us, told you about our partners, I think we can jump into our recap for today's session. Alrighty. Just adjust my headphones. Last we met, Iron and Mana concluded their investigation of the abandoned chapel in the temple court of Hyben. They found evidence of strange magic held within a shard of golden metal, as well as evidence of a heavy entity that may be responsible for the murder of Martin Escroth and Hugo Pascal. There was some debate on whether or not this entity was a machina, but ultimately they needed more answers. So they plan to confirm their findings with their potential eyewitness, a street urchin named Omar. Jacquette had tasked Reardon, his wild magic associate, with the finding and questioning of this urchin. But as the party began leaving the quiet chapel, Jacquette noticed a loose stone in the lectern. Inside, he found a locked lead box. He heard coins inside and was very excited. Bruce was able to see some other items within as well. There was an old and worn insignia on top, uh, and Jacquette began to pick the lock on the box. But as it unlocked, the room darkened and shadows began pouring out of the cursed container. Bruce quickly locked the box again with a magic lock spell. Among, amongst the panic, the party decided it was best to deal with whatever curse lay on this box than to leave it for someone else to find. They positioned themselves to strike and released the evil. A ghostly apparition appeared with other shadowy spirits at its side. The party fought and banished the spirits, 
And amongst the in and amongst this commotion, the spirits had bewitched Fearn for a moment, and he experienced visions of some of his worst memories and nightmares. The party got small glimpses of this in the form of shadowy apparitions. But once they defeated these enemies, the party calmed and found reward within the box, as well as Sass recovering some strange dust the spirits turned into upon defeat. Fearn read a letter that they found in the box that seemed to come from the chapel's former cleric. In short, it explained that the flock of the faith were killed in the great storm a year prior. And from the perspective of the cleric, the god of this temple, Astaris, provided no protection from that coming storm. The cleric did blame all of this woe on an idol he came into possession of, an onyx cat head with jade eyes. This idol was found with the box itself. Bruce determined through a identify spell that it was a uh, magic item. The party moved on and began is searching. It though? Uh, well, it is. It's a stone of good luck, as far as they know. <laughs> as far as we know? Oh, boy. Uh, maybe the, the cleric had good luck, but just ultimately it couldn't beat out the great storm. Uh, the party moved on and began searching for Reardon and the urchin, Omar. Uh, before they found them in the Lighthouse District, they met an official auditor of Governor Pajan named Emil. The auditor was assessing the Lighthouse District when the party came up upon him, asking if he'd seen any urchins around. Uh, they were able to put a good word in for themselves with Emil, particularly Bruce, who led this conversation. Uh, he took their calling card and let them know where he saw the urchins last, as well as basically saying he would put a good word in for them with the governor's office. And eventually, after some running through the streets and maybe some jumping from building to building, the party caught up with the urchins and found Reardon as he was chasing after them, rooftop to rooftop. This Omar character seemed to be the leader of this rough, uh, rough group of urchins. And he explained that he saw Hugo Pascal slit Martin Escroft's throat and then an angel in plate armor killed Hugo before disappearing. Omar had heard a bell ring from within the chapel as the entity vanished. He fled out of fear after witnessing this murder. The party thanked him, and Jaquette passed on some silver as the children all seemed enamored with, uh, with his behavior. Uh, they had made an ally out of these urchins, and they even invited the party to their hideout in the ruins of the lighthouse. But the party ended their evening questioning Reardon about his hometown, Stony Heath, where they have business coming up. Reardon shared what he could about the town politics as well as the mind there, as well as promising to give them some context that he might have known when he used to live there. But he also shared that he was essentially run out of the town by his parents and family for his wild magic afflictions that were causing issues. Uh... But ultimately, the party concluded these questions and turned in for the night, preparing for the next day and the eventual arrival of Governor Pajin, uh two days from now. So that is where we are going to begin today. The party is gathered in, uh, I imagine, the Cask and Crow for another morning of their plans for today. So you're all enjoying breakfast around the table. What would you like to do? Or talk about this morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, what are we doing today? Well, uh, our only clue is the the woman who worked in the uh, temple that knew the victims. And she's not working until later. So we have some time to kill, I suppose. Well, wasn't there also the sibling? Uh, what was yeah. his name? Uh, I don't know. Your, your, your friend Reardon didn't get all the information he could out of? Reardon did not look into him. I'd only asked Reardon to look for the uh, eyewitness Omar because I felt like that was the more challenging thing and, you know, gotta test the lad, see how good he's actually, you know, if he's actually worth his silver. Uh, it was Lucas. 
Ah, of course, Lucas, thank you. Divine intervention. <laughs> well, I suppose right. we can tr track down this Lucas character. Well, we only have a day before we need to depart, correct? Uh, well, uh, we have the uh, parade tomorrow, and then I assume, depending on how that goes, uh, we'll leave the day after. That's that's right. All right. Um, so, in that case, hey, uh, Saskia. Uh, oh yes, as she's eating a happy eaten sandwich that she made. I, I wouldn't eat that. that table. Yeah, she's like already chewing um, on it, like full mouthful as you say that, slowly lowering it and then shrugging and taking another bite. Uh, so speaking of travel, do you do you think you could uh, get boat preparations for us? You know, just. Oh, I could definitely. She's got a mouthful of sandwiches. She's like, I could definitely do that. And, you, and you she, got you got experience with boats, right? You know, you've been she out. She shakes her head. Yes. Uh, all right. Okay. But well, uh, make sure it's a good one. You know, something that's won't be too bumpy. Uh, has a reputable crew. Uh, you know, maybe I don't know. I've always liked it. Make sure it has a proper name. You know, like a proper exploring vessel. <laughs> something like the widow's peak. Uh, not quite, or I don't know, maybe uh, the Voyager's uh, fancy or something. I don't know. Just some ideas. The Go Mary, I don't know. She, she gives you a very uh, judgmental look and then nods and uh, finishes the sandwich and heads out to go do that task. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. And we'll see her next week. <laughs> <laughs> Um, question before you guys move uh, move on, uh, Steph. The note that um, you all left with the uh, Commodore's office. Uh, did you mention within that note where they could even find you or get in touch with you? Uh, we can be found staying at the inn called the Cask and Crow, okay. and eagerly await your reply. Cool. Just check. All right, so Saskio wanders off for the day to go and prep a ship for you all. Uh, all right, so should we go find this Lucas kid? Do we have any leads on where he is? Um, you know I believe, exactly where he is. Yes, that we were all given right, an address we... by Helen, so we can go there. Well, maybe after breakfast. And give him sure, of course. To wake up and, I don't know, don't want to barge in at four in the morning, you know. It's not four. It's like eight a.m. You I know meant, me. I, I'm normally not up until a few hours after the crow yeah, call. You're the one that always sleeps in. As long as there's no spirits in the sky that's guiding us at four in the morning is what I was making reference to. Anyway. Oh yes, of course. As you say that, no. <laughs> <laughs> a kite goes flying across the sky. <laughs> no more of this foreshadowing bullshit. <laughs> No, but I promise to never foreshadow again. Uh, <laughs> going blind into all stories. Um, <clears throat> okay, so do you want to, uh, after breakfast and in a little bit of time, head over to uh, Lucas's apartment to see if he is there or to find out more information about him? Uh, yeah. Okay. Just knock on his door. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, kick, kick probably down. take a shower first. <laughs> you know, plus one charisma right there. <laughs> of course, Bruce. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, so, uh, you can easily enough do that. Is there anything else you want to talk about or plan before that? Or do we want to jump right to that task? Uh, good, just to jump right there. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. All right. So, uh, you have his address. You can head over, I believe. Uh... All right, Slurpy McSlurp face. That's you, Mike. You're slurping a lot. <laughs> Thanks. We're going to need to uh, uh, adjust your sensitivity on your mic. <laughs> mm. Is there a slurp filter that you can get? Maybe. Just... That's actually what we need, because we don't want to lose his, his, his voice. We 
Right. Just wanna... <laughs> you know what I think you actually need? I think you need a slurp zone on your desk where you know yeah, your true. mic's not going to catch it. You can slurp here, but not here. Because I do I, feel like your slurp I zone right now is right in like front of your this, mic. And I'm like eating <laughs> over here. <laughs> but anyway. I'll just make sure to mute it. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> okay, so uh, you head off towards the uh, residential areas of the town. Um, I believe... I told you all that his apartment was in the old Brigadier Gate District, close to the flea market. Mm -hmm. um, so you can head that direction. And here you can find, you know, the, the homes are stacked on top of each other here. A lot of tenement housing. You are going into a really, really tight building where there's a lot of uh, families living there. Uh, but you can go up the stairs of this, this uh, apartment structure and find where his room is or his home and knock away at the door. Uh, who's leading this uh, this knock? Um, or are you um, all just uh, doing it do together? You, do you want me to knock? I uh, I could talk to him if you want. It, I we can all talk to him. Just knock on the door if you're. It doesn't matter who knocks. We can all talk. It's okay. I knock pretty loudly. Okay, that <laughs> that seems like you fucked up the knock. <laughs> Uh, I will say the one thing you do notice before knocking or as you knock is that there is a uh, a placard next to his uh, apartment door that does say uh, Pascal Cobbler Shop. So he runs a cobbler shop out of his home. Um, but it's not too long after you knock that you would hear some sk skittering around inside. Uh, you know, very rushed uh, as he would come to the door and creak it opened just a crack. You'd see a very, very skinny man with a bony face, short bowl cut of dusty brown hair, very simple clothes with a black vest and a flat cap and jacket. Uh, uh, well, he is, wouldn't be wearing those. You'd actually just see them hanging on a hook next to the door as he opens the door, uh, looking very nervous at, at those he can see, kind of going from Fearn to Jacquet to Septimus down to Bruce and then back up to Fearn who knocked. Hello. Uh, can I help you? Um, yes. Uh, we're part of an adventuring party. Investigating. Are you picking up or dropping off? We have some questions we'd like to ask you about the death of your brother, if that's okay. Um, those of you proficient in insight would, like, noticeably <laughs> see his, like, eyes widen and his pupils dilate at that as he uh sort of closes the door again and you can hear him unlatch the the lock uh the chain lock and opens it wider now and and says i already answered any questions for the papers well um, we're we're not affiliated with them we're uh our own little group trying to just investigate what's been going on we're hoping just to what we you solve, can like, yeah, we solve problems a, yeah so. instead of just looking for a story we actually try and figure out who did it um okay uh come on in uh and you see he opens the door wide for you now and and as soon as you look in like this place is uh i mean I, it, it's not a mess in the sense that there's like garbage all over the place but like his he clearly doesn't like separate his living space from his work uh, as you can see there are cobbler tools all over the place there are um sort of a, a instead of like an actual nice living room uh there's just like a wall of shelving for uh the work that he's doing and you just see there's just this very simple small table with two chairs on either side uh the same chair that kellen sat across from uh, to interview him with um very tiny kitchen um, that is uh, basically a galley kitchen attached to this. There's basically one window looking out into the alleyway um, and then a door that you presume goes to a bedroom. Uh, very, very tiny, tight, dingy apartment. Um, nice as... little shop you have here. Oh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not as uh, glamorous as the 
uh, you know, Hugo's lifestyle, but I'm comfortable here and and, and make enough to to live by. Um, uh, where, where's, where's your bathroom? Uh, um, it's actually down the hall. It's a All shared. Right, I'll be right back. Uh, well, anyway. <laughs> Sean, where did I get my shoes? Because I remember uh, somebody bought me a pair after I lost the other ones. Uh, you I ought to... Saskia bought you a pair so mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have... Uh, what's his name? Um, Captain, Hastings. Hastings. Yeah. Captain Hastings boots. Yeah. yeah, that would have been from probably either the uh, a general store or the flea market. It wouldn't have been out of his his office he's 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 doing more like repairs uh for shoes um than he is it was his rival cobbler <laughs> it was his rival cobbler yeah and you can see the insignia there and he looks at it yeah. and goes, oh. and he goes these <laughs> boots don't you dare wear these boots in my house <laughs> <laughs> no he offers uh the two chairs to you all uh and then kind of quickly rushes into his kitchen and starts to drag out these like really uh crummy stools uh, um there is uh not enough seats for everyone um that's okay fear will stand yeah jacquette elects to stand and will start to kind of like casually walk around the room inspecting mm -hmm. the quality of tools and uh boots and stuff as the others conduct kind of the interview yeah so yeah. those would sit down um Trying to make, maybe become like make him comfortable, or he can mm -hmm. like sit in his own home, so not everybody's just standing over him. Yeah. Um. Once we get settled, but uh, well, firstly, condolences um, for your loss. We'd like to bring whoever this was to justice. As he goes and flips up through his his notebook that he's got, his little pad. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I guess let's just start with what could you tell us that what you told the reporter? Um, before I have him answer, Jacques, can you give me an investigation check just to get a vibe for the room as you're looking yeah. about? You know, I turned that stupid uh, acceleration thing, thing. Yeah, off and it still rolls like shit. Uh, uh, or just slowly. Uh, that's a dirty 20. Ooh. Okay, cool. So a few things that I'll mention. Um, he uh you one you notice that the tools are all very clean um and well taken care of um and despite kind of like when you stepped in it looked a little dingy in here upon closer inspection everything seems to have its right place even though it might not be uh, uh from first looks where very well organized this guy probably could find what any of his tools within a matter of, of seconds if you were to ask him for them um you find uh a vastly overflowing um uh ashtray of of cigarettes this man is a clearly a, cha a nervous chain smoker um you would find uh where there's all this workstation for cobbling there's also a desk by the door that you would notice has a lot of uh ink and parchment and and writing it looks like he does a lot of writing you would also, with a dirty 20, would find that there are a lot of books around that desk. Um, and even just like opening the front uh, cover of one of them, you would see that these are books that are are from the Academy. Um, uh, now, real, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was, uh, what's the quality of his worksmanship? Like, is, is he a good cobbler? Is he a fine cobbler? Or is he, you know, working here because he's not great? He is a fine cobbler. Like, like okay. this is actually good work. Like, you wouldn't, uh, upon looking up at him, like, on the street, you might not think, like, oh, that's a quality cobbler. I'm going to get my shoes shine and fixed by that guy. But upon looking at the work, uh, he is quite gifted at cobbling. He's put a lot of effort into learning this trade. Um, but you might surmise that from the desk of writing and books that he has some penchant for literature or writing. Um some of the titles of the books, though, you do notice have some level of uh, um, uh, celestial mechanics. A lot of them have, mm -hmm. have relations to that. Um, and 
that's probably it that you would notice for this. Um, Septimus, as you're talking to him, you notice that while he is skittish, he seems to be fairly agreeable. He doesn't seem like he's not willing to talk. So as you ask him about what he told Kellen, he would look to you and he does kind of look around skittishly to the rest of the group, um, you know, as Bruce comes back in from the bathroom and, and and settles in as Jacques. He doesn't seem overly nervous about your presence. Um, he seems rather quiet. It's just he has a, 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 a general nervousness. Um, but he would look to you and say, um, I, 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 Told the reporter uh, everything I knew about Hugo and his dealings. Um, uh, uh, I had seen him a couple of nights before he was found dead. Uh, and he said he was... Uh, I had thought he was going to be leaving on a journey north. But he told me he wouldn't have to do that anymore. And he said that he would be coming into some money soon. Um, he was a... I, I looked at him and thought, well, this isn't going to last. Uh, he never holds on to money. Um, but he said this time he was going to get quite a bit. Uh, and I think he... He had intentions of leaving Hyven eventually. I always thought that he'd sc screwed over too many people in this part of Alfdal and needed to find new people to screw over. I didn't spend a lot of time with my brother. I wish I had. Uh, how often did you see each other, typically? Well, he would wander off and go on uh, his little trips or, or he would spend all of his time at the tavern. He didn't live here with you, did he? I uh, see he takes out a, a, a cigarette and lights it with a match and looks at you as he's sort of, you know, nervously. He, the moment he does that, Jacquet audibly goes, disgusting. Uh, he doesn't seem to even hear Jacquet say that, um, or at least is paying no attention to it. He's, he kind of looks away and he's very like, shrunken in his form like he's clearly if he stood tall would be a tall man like his brother was said to be but he kind of shrinks into himself no no hugo hugo preferred the taverns and the brothels uh, any was... specific one that he frequented <clears throat> uh i don't frequent them myself but uh... Uh, the one in the temple court he, he liked. Um, he would also spend some time at the Harlequin and Chalice. Uh, as well as a few others, but most of the time was in the temple court. Uh, he, he wasn't one to pass off a free meal. Uh, but he also liked to leave the city. Uh, go to Fairhold quite frequently. He hasn't in a while because of the sorry state of the road, which you'd think a, a hedge paladin would would go out and take care of that sort of business. But he wasn't one for really honoring that oath. You know, my parents, our parents, loved when he became a hedge paladin, but uh, uh, I don't think they ever really saw his real attitude. They looked at him much more as a a sign of our family's great contribution. But I kept my work, kept to helping people. With day to day, everyone needs boots. Everyone needs comfortable shoes to work. Right. You, d you have a fine trade. Um. Going back to the oath that your brother took, your parents were happy about this? Were you present during, uh, I guess, whatever his initiation? Uh, well, Hedge Paladins, they don't have any centralized structures. They Basically, like any any 
Hitch Paladin can make a new Hedge Paladin. And he had started hanging out with uh, someone he met on the road and took his oath and uh, none of us were present because he seemed to have taken it on somewhat of a whim. But uh, no, uh, I was not present, but my parents, uh, when he returned from that journey, uh, were quite happy with him. Uh, you see, the Hedge Paladin he had met was well, seemed quite wealthy. Purchased him a set of plate armor, sword, everything he needed. He yeah, always, just... always got everything he needed. Did he ever describe much of the man that he encountered on the road? Ah, uh, older gentleman, someone not from Hyven, not from Asia, either from the north or the Midlands but not from Asia uh, he said he met him in uh, Asia City many years ago but uh, mm. our family was not wealthy so our parents saw it as a, a valuable use of our state a way that he could help people. Did he ever mention anything about his work? I know you said that his last thing was quite private. He didn't really give you any details, but anybody that he trusted to work with or do dealings with, did he have any friends that would come by the shop? Oh, Hugo, Hugo never had any real friends. Only those he paid to hang out with him and be around him. I occasionally, I would see him. He would come here to hide out when he'd screwed someone over. And uh, I took it as a good opportunity to spend time with my brother. But he, uh, he made a lot of enemies in Ivan. I'm probably the only person who was not exactly... Surprised to find out that he had killed. Well, last time I did speak with him, he said he was coming into money, so I said he should leave. I, I even offered to go with him. You mentioned up north anywhere in particular you had in mind? I'd always wanted to see the capital. Uh, and, uh, Ivan is a bit of a painful place for, for us, or at least for me, since our parents passed away. Uh, I don't, don't like looking up to the, the Admiralty Court hanging high above us. Hmm. And uh, at the mention of that, um, Jacquet. Uh, you might, judging from his table and this statement, see a man who wishes he could be more than he is. But, yes. Uh, oh, uh, I was just trying to think of what to say with that little cue you gave me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, you know, Jacquette finally speaks up. First he goes, uh, <clears throat> uh, do you mind gesturing to the cigarette? Uh, and he kind of looks at it like sort of like a little surprised. Uh, in uh, oh, It's not Oops. a healthy habit for yourself or for those around you. He takes uh, uh, a few more drags of it and then puts it out, uh, nodding to you kind of accommodatingly. Jacquette looks crossed at the extra drags he takes. <laughs> like, it's not, you're not doing what I asked. <laughs> uh, but then you'll continue. Um, yes, so uh, I think we can all agree that we understand um, the oppression that comes from on high. Jacquette says, almost like following his gaze up towards where the Admiralty Court would be. Um, We've had to fight tooth and claw to get up there ourselves. You know, 
doing favors, rubbing elbows. It's, it's hard work, you know, when we have so much other things to do. But it looks like, uh, Jacquette says, walking over to the table uh, and kind of tapping at the books, that you would be more than perfect for the Academy on High. Have you ever tried to apply? Oh, I, when I was younger, but uh, parents didn't have the coin to send me there. I, I couldn't afford it working. I got an apprenticeship as a cobbler, and by the time I had made any money, it was it seemed too late, and even still, I didn't have enough. I, it's the only way I got in, in to the grounds at all was becoming a cobbler. I, I have a client in the academy that I deliver to. And while you're up there, you happen through the libraries? And he's a little, uh, uh, Spooked when you say that. Uh, he's like, oh, 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 I, I borrowed a few textbooks uh, when I, I visit. Quite interesting literature you have here. Uh, what's this? Uh, Melvin's musings on ast uh, celestial mechanics? That's a good one. I haven't fully read it myself, but heard good things. And uh, what's this on uh, astral seas? The realms of the gods. These don't sound like books. Sorry, now that I've finished my lollipop. Those don't, like, don't sound like books that I, <clears throat> a cobbler would be reading. Got anything else to add? Or in terms of interest? I mean, I, of course, they're not relevant to my trade, but and who isn't interested in the cosmic? Of course. Stars of course. above, and I, uh, um, uh, and he kind of looks around nervously, and says, I, I will, must admit, I may have fallen prey to the rumors, uh, about Machina's whisper and otherworldly reasons for my brother's death. Are you aware? Folks say there was an eyewitness to the whole incident. I did not know that. Yes. A young urchin named Omar. We found him. Of course we did. I don't think the newspapers ever really put much credit to him. But we found him. And what he had to tell was very interesting. Are you aware of the circumstances of your brother's death? Uh, you see at this, he, he does, like, stand up and, like, wanders over towards his desk with his books, where he just seem, seems to, like, run his hand over some of the bindings as you, as you were saying all of this. Mm -hmm. And he turns back around to you as you say this last question. I figured he was doing some kind of deal and went sour with a client of his. You can only... You can only blackmail and hold hostage so many people's desires. Would you say that you could only break your oath so many times? Yes. That's what Hugo was accused of, breaking his oath by a simple man named Martin who worked at the revelry where your brother frequented. I heard some rumors that Martin was involved. Oh, you know Martin. I, not from the tavern itself, but I know a few people around town. I'd only met Martin once. He's a very nice man. Yes. Very nice man who trusted your brother. And with that trust, your brother slits his throat. He leans against his desk at that. And, he, and like, maybe, maybe like feigning shock, but like no shock is on his face when you say this. 
my, my brother committed a lot of sins. He was never really a true oath keeper. But I loved him. Of course. We, uh, we always love our family a little, don't we? Even for all their sins. No. Oh. Martin called Hugo an oath breaker. And that's when Hugo turned and slit his throat. And then our eyewitness claims an angel appeared. A large golden creature. And with one swift move of its hand, crushed your brother's skull. Now this angel, Jacquette says, looking pointedly towards uh, the books, <laughs> the books, excuse me, I'm a little tired, mm -hmm. uh, and almost like pointing at them, just like you know, with his gaze and his fingers, uh, <laughs> goes, uh, do you know anything of angels, Lucas? And uh, you see, when you asked him a question like this, mm -hmm. he it's not he doesn't perk up, but there's clearly more fire, more motivation as he does turn to look to the books. And he starts to flip through one of them. Uh, I, I believe I've read on this. Um, celestial orders of law and justice, so to speak. While he's doing this, uh, Jacques kind of looks at the others and like kind of mouths like he did his, our research for us. Um, uh, very few sightings of celestial creatures, but there are orders of angels who are said to exist in the cosmos or the cosmic structures in the celestial tree. Uh, I'm not a man of faith myself, but I suppose a paladin breaking one's oath could call upon the judgment of angelic orders. But in a, I don't know any records of such executions at the hands of angels. <laughs> Never mind. Let's think about some more yeah, hard evidence. Enough. Tell me, did uh, Kellen or anybody uh, else who has questioned you about this matter mention that your brother had any valuables on him when he was killed? Uh, well, thankfully, uh, my brother was not discovered by thieves. Everything he had on him has been, was brought to me. Can you show us? Of course. Uh, and you see he walks across the room to a closet, uh, not even in a different room, in the same room, and opens it up, and you see there um, is uh, sort of like in a pile on the, the ground because he doesn't have a proper setup is like is this brother's full plate armor um you can see there are dents in the um pauldrons and the chest piece from where he, he was attacked and blood all over them like dried blood that uh um uh lucas just has not cleaned um and besides that uh bloody plate armor uh is just one uh sort of uh, side bag, not even like a whole backpack, just sort of a, a pouch that a haversatch. Uh, and he takes that out and walks over with it. And you can see he also has in his other hand uh, the holy holy symbol his brother would have used, um, which the symbol itself is just sort of a uh, like a, it's it's made of um, it's a mosaic that depicts a uh, a long winding road that leads to a sunset with two sort of trees growing flanking the road um, 
one of which looks more celestial and one of which that looks more nature-like, uh, sort of mirroring the old world uh, cosmic theories of the twin trees that support existence. Um, but the primary thing of it is this long winding road that leads to a sunset representing the, ro the, the road that hedge paladins travel upon and take upon themselves to protect. Um, so he has this holy symbol and then he has this haversatch. Um, he only had these things belongings on him. The haversatch contained the, the, uh, silver he had on him at the time. The, uh, In his holy symbol of his oath. But my brother traveled lightly. He said, said it was to prevent that... highwaymen from taking his belongings. That makes sense. But if you think that he was there for some sort of business deal that went wrong, he might have, if he was making some sort of trade, unless he had no intention of paying out at all, he might have stashed away some valuables somewhere for the other party to find or I, I'm I'm looking through as I'm saying this I'm looking through the things like I check the inside of the the armor and uh, you know anything like searching through the sack and uh, you know investigating the symbol to see if there's any like latches or something in case there's something mm -hmm. hidden inside mm -hmm. Uh, you know, just searching for anything yeah. that might have been looked over. Yeah, um, no. Go ahead, Mike. I was saying, in addition, um, if you allow, I like to take a look at this, the holy symbol, mm -hmm. and just kind of study it. Um, and this is just like a common one, but like for all hedge clerics would like have something like this. Yeah, so the um, generally the, the hedge paladins and hedge clerics would be considered... Uh, um, sort of like having taken like an oath of oath of the protector or oath of the road, um, where basically they their entire purpose is to kind of be the classic adventurer, like to help people no matter what the problem is. They're traditional monster slayers, mm -hmm. um, and you actually would have even probably experienced some of these when you were young. Um, like your father might have even hired a hedge paladin here or there to to deal with uh, like a, a, a roaming griffin that's bothering or eating up the crops right. or killing the cattle. Um, they're very much so that kind of classic uh, monster hunter uh, sort of adventurer. There's not as many of them as there used to be since a lot of folks are, are like, I'm going to make, they don't make a lot of money. They basically are like, I will kill the monster if you feed me and house me for for a week. Um, and okay. but you don't have to pay me anything. That's why he was such a unconventional and troublesome hedge paladin because he he for he extor extorted people right. essentially. If that's the case, then um, good jumping back quickly, saying kind of actually getting up out of his seat and going to the shelf that. Jaquette had picked, um, had mentioned with all the books. It's like you had mentioned you had read quite a bit about angels. Any one of these that you can recall that had mentioned that as some sort of a uh, coating of golden, or like a metallic gold seal to them with etchings? Oh, there are a lot of lost texts from my understanding. You know, I must admit that I'm self-learning on all of this. I've not taken any classes or consulted uh, the the, the uh, academics. And as he's just saying that, I'll start just like pulling books and kind of just like fingering through casually. Yeah, give me a investigation check. Uh, Sean, while this has been going on, ever since he's kind of showed us the the items in which mm -hmm. he acquired from Luke, uh, Hugo's dead body, uh, could I have casted Identify and also do an investigation check of the items to see if I can surmise any more details about what a Huma, Hugo might have been doing that evening mm -hmm. uh, or more details about what his dealings? And also... Um, if there's any sort of aura magicalness about 
is either his holy symbol or half plate or yada yada yada. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so, uh, Mike, Answer what was first that? Goes first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was that investigation check? Uh, crit fail. Okay. I, I thought you had gone like this, like like yes, you did well. <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, I will say you did say you were casually <laughs> flipping through. Yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess like the only thing you might notice, uh, you know, you don't notice anything about like the topics. You're kind of sifting through them. It's it's everything. Like these are very broad books that he's taken taken out that are like covering a lot of things. Um. And you guess you just noticed that like, uh, they're long past their uh, return date. Hmm. <laughs> um, uh, Clay, when you're looking around for specific things within the armor uh, or the satchel, you'll find everything's pretty in order. Like, there's no like secret compartments. Like, it, it almost confirms to you all that this man was not like some conniving like mastermind of a plot. He was just a really greedy son of a bitch um, at the end of the day. Um, uh, uh, Bruce, with your identify, um, there is magic to the armor and the uh, um, holy symbol. There is very uh, sort of background latent magic to the holy symbol that you can even tell even just from this identify that is slowly fading away without the actual oath keeper to keep it here. Um, and the armor itself seems to have some mild enchantments upon it. Um, uh, particularly, it seems like it had an enchantment to make Hugo uh, resistant to fear effects. Um, and so, it, long story short, it's a plate set of plate, full plate armor with a fear resistance charm on it. Um, and he does have a sword there, but there's nothing magical about the sword. Um, but generally, uh, the magic of, of this fading, uh, I mean, upon closer inspection of it, you can notice that like the there is imperfections to the mosaic of it that does look like it was like cracked at some point. Um, now, this could have happened when the, the creature crushed his skull, um, uh, or it could be a, a previous uh, fracture to the, the holy symbol. Um, but it does look like the magic leaks from that crack, particularly. Mm. If you were to be uh, looking at this with like, if you had like infrared goggles, you can see like sort of this seeping aura coming off of that uh, that crack. Mm. Um, getting back to my question, um, I understand that it's sort of a sensitive topic, but people that I've known that remind me of what it seems your brother was like always have some sort of you know backup plan or some sort of hideaway or something along those lines i'm not saying we want any part of that but have you looked for anything that he might have hidden away is he ever did he ever tell you if he were to get into trouble to go somewhere or find something well, if I'm being completely honest, uh, this uh, apartment was usually his backup location. I never turned him away when he needed help. I also rarely asked him questions because I didn't want to get involved with whoever he had swindled or conned that day. Many a time when someone had banged on the door and I had to pretend he was not here. Right. Do you mind, Lucas, uh, where exactly did Hugo sleep when he stayed here? Well, I usually let him take the bedroom when I would come out here and make up a cot. Would you mind if we searched your bedroom for anything? If if it's too personal, you know, that's okay. We can Just... give you time to make your bed and everything. Do not embarrassed. <laughs> We don't we don't plan on stealing from you. We just want to get to the bottom of this. Uh you can give me a persuasion roll uh here. Uh and I'll say that you guys are working together on that so you can do it with advantage. Oh. It's mostly to see if he's too skittish from this request or if he's 
You've Thank God I had advantage. Uh, I got a 13. <laughs> okay. So I would say um, largely because you guys have been very calm and I've, there's been no accusatory natures coming into this this uh, interview or any anger, you've all been very respectful. He seems quite open to any request you've given to him. Um, he, uh, you know, the worst you've done is told him to put his cigarette out. So he seems like as long as everyone's calm, he stays calm. Uh, so he says, well, uh, of course, I'm a simple man. There's not much to clean up or hide. Uh, he would, I suppose he may have hidden something in there if he was trying to keep from it being taken back or stolen. He wasn't a great hedge paladin, but hedge paladins themselves aren't quite rich. Bruce, why don't you go take a look? Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, Do uh, your thing, uh, guy. Uh, hey, uh, Sep, uh, could you uh, just kind of take a look, see if there's anything magical in here that I should pinpoint? Septimus. Um Yeah, no, I got that. I was just like, <laughs> going to say, uh, as long that is also okay with you. Uh, I will possess no magical artifacts other than what my brother left behind. Okay. Then he will. I'd love and... to get one of those new magical poplar sets. How or, much uh, does one of those or an set enchanted? You back? Enchanted uh, utensils from the university, any of that sort. We can see about making that happen. Uh, let's first yeah. take a look at the bed. When he does say that, there is sort of like a a, a listlessness to him that he mm -hmm. looks off, like clearly like someone imagining a greater life for himself. Um, uh, and I just just to um, kill some time, like kind of to distract him while. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do this investigation. I'm going to pull out my uh, spell book that I also got from the Academy and just show him this is a beginner's tome on casting. I'm sure that I'm not sure if it's something you're interested in, but take a look at it. We uh, we have friends in the Academy as well. Maybe uh, we could work something out if, you know, mm -hmm. things go well here. Uh, truthfully, like you saying that, like he immediately steps up like he's standing up straight he has like his hand on his hip and his and his other hand just sort of like uh caressing the bony chin that he has as he's looking over the book and he hears you say that and his eyes go wide uh and he's, really <sighs> and, well, and I, I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't you know make any promises we we just have friends there but i can try and put in a good word and I would say, um, Septimus, uh, as you kind of like close the book that you were looking at to go and help with Bruce, you sort of passively notice uh, in the front page, the front uh, um, library card of it, that uh, he is, did not take any of these books out. Hmm. hmm. Looks like the brothers are more similar than he wants us to know. <laughs> um. But uh, you can close the book and, and put it away and go with uh, Bruce into the next room and do your investigation. Um, uh, so you're going to do like a detect magic? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and... So I assume in the other room, uh, Fearn and, and, and Jacquette are, are just sort of keeping him occupied while the two of you uh, do this investigation. Sounds good. I almost imagine Jacquette's in the doorway just watching the two of them work, just being like, yeah, make sure to check every nook and cranny, you know? We don't want to miss anything. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, so detect magic. Uh, it goes off. Um, this uh, First of all, the room is very small. Like, your detect magic will easily cover the entire room. Um, there's just a very, very small twin-sized bed uh, a little stand with a little uh, lantern. Um, more of those books are are scattered around the floor. Uh, a very sing a single, very small window looking out to the alleyway as well. Um, uh, very you know scuffed up wood floors um, in this whole space with the 
area you were in before has a raggedy carpet. Um, but um, you immediately get a ping. Um, hmm. Underneath the bed. ting a ling a ling uh, Underneath the floorboards. Um, and as you l- kind of look down, um, and Bruce, with your, your uh, goggles on, I'm assuming, you can start to see, like, details. Like, one, there are scratches on the floor where clearly Hugo must have been pushing this bed aside and, and, and opening up these floorboards um, that you can easily see. Now, you know, they're the kind of thing that you would easily miss if you were not looking for it. Um, or even if you were, you know, looking and just didn't do a thorough search. Um, but there are loose floorboards there. Um, I will direct that to him. He's like, I'm getting something beneath the, the bed there or, or underneath the floorboards. Do you see uh, anything with I, your, yeah, with I your got special it. eyes? Thank you. No, uh, you're, uh, with no, your brand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bruce is going to scurry along the floor and try his best to to like wedge like a something in there and be like, mm-hmm. uh, can you, uh, I can't lift this myself. Can you pry it open? <laughs> I will help assist him. <laughs> I got a nat. Oh, watch! I got a nat twenty on a strength check. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, <laughs> no strength needed. It's, uh, yeah, it's a fairly it's a easy, yeah. easy to open situation. Um, I'm rolling anyway because if I fail, it'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Um. So when you open up, uh, there are a few things in there. You find, um, uh. You find a dagger. Um, you find a dagger. Uh, so, so Bruce is just like taking these items and just like putting them on the floor for display too, like in front of yeah uh, the bottom of uh, Septimus's feet. <laughs> so you find a dagger. You find a set of clothes, common clothes. Uh, you find a satchel of coin, um, and then another satchel that you at first think is coin, but then when you place it down, it's a little. Uh, irregular sounding. It doesn't sound like thin coins. It sounds like chunks of metal. Um, now, which one has magic in it? Yeah, which one of the things is magic? Uh, the uh, the unconventional chunks. Um, and then once once he clears everything, is that everything? Uh, yeah, that's everything. Once he clears everything, I'll, I'll I'll shout into the other room. Guys, we we found something. Uh, uh, Bruce is gonna just. Seeing Jacquet at the door, it just toss it uh, the, the bag of coins to Jacquet. Divvy that, uh, and uh, Bruce will um... <laughs> or count it, I should say. Divvy it up. As... <laughs> just take the spend call. As you hit his brothers standing right behind Jacquet <laughs> after you called everyone in. <laughs> as you went in there and said, "We're not stealing from you." <laughs> I believe this belongs to you now, as his next of kin. Jacquet says, oh. offering the bag. And while well, he, he going to grab it, situation. Uh, he does reach to grab it. Um, uh, less, less than like, a, oh, thank you for my coin, and more like to count it and look at it and like to investigate right. it. When when he goes to take it, there is definitely resistance as Jacquet is doing something <laughs> you'd never think him to do. He's just like. It's yours, <laughs> but you need to earn it. <laughs> um, um, and then uh, um, so I think I still have the. Oh, I was gonna say if you put stuff on the bed, I was gonna rifle through the, the magic metal. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So as you open the satch, the satchel, uh, it is uh, identical gold metal as the one you found in the chapel. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It like except in this shape? is except well this is clearly uh, like, like coin form uh, or it does it has a similar like slab uh, nature to it but this even with just a cursory look at it is a single item shattered so it's where you found a single shard of a greater piece mm-hmm. oh These, this is an item that is that was broken yes, this yes, looks like a, a survivor esque medallion puzzle we need to solve it <laughs> this is uh a clearly a um uh probably an, a, a single item that shattered it within this bag uh-huh. oh um being very careful with it not to mm-hmm. let anything loose it's like it's that same strange that metal that i can't place but it's 
nature is, but it seems to be broken. Um, do you have some uh, a workspace or a table that I can? Well, of course, you can. I can, put, I can put away some of my tools over there at the cobbler station. Luke, I'm going to be very frank with you. Whatever this thing that we just found in your apartment is, it's what got your. Uh, it's most likely what your got your brother killed. Uh, we don't know that at all. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to. Okay, the, whatever it is, it's not. It, it has some sort of magical energy that is undefined, and it is most likely. Uh has something very to do with this and whatever that cr thing was that attacked him that night might be looking for the rest of it we don't know that at all uh, why see... talk over you when you you're doing <laughs> interviews huh i don't talk over you i just add things on to the end when you're giving misinformation <laughs> Uh, you see, Lucas is sort of like in that same stance he was when Fearn, you were showing him a bunch of uh, your spell book, that fascinated, curious look now, as opposed to his nervous, anxious, uncertain look. Like, oh. What I'm trying to say is this is dangerous stuff. And it, I think that it would probably be best if it were in our hands, you know, to protect you. Uh, I'm not saying to give it over. True. No, we're taking this. <laughs> You, if you said that you were looking to solve these murders, I don't see any reason why I should hold on to anything that can help you. Oh, so that coin uh, might be helpful. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, what about these common clothes? Do you ever see uh, Hugo wear these? <laughs> he looks... I was like, <laughs> Bruce is like holding it over his face. <laughs> he looks and he's... Uh, those do seem to be Hugo's sizes. <laughs> He should have washed these. I these didn't gross. know that he had a stash here. He must have been keeping it secret from me when he would stay here. Uh, come to think of it, he did usually dominate the room. He didn't like to have me come in. Hmm. You were saying this material is not not known? He looks to Septimus. It's magical in nature, but as, as similar to another piece that we found at the crime scene, it's not abjuration, it's not evocation, it's it's something I've never even heard of before. Oh, uh, I'm no expert. I have read that scholars of the material plane can have struggled to identify substances from beyond. So he kind of like nervously looks around and upward. The only moment that he kind of like looks a little, little insane uh, as he says that. Extra plane of material. From what I've read, of course, can be particularly volatile on the material plane. Hmm. I know, maybe we should hold on to this for safekeeping. No, we are. We're holding on to it. That's. Sorry, I mean no offense, Lucas. Like, but... oh, so you're making up your mind because a minute ago you, you didn't. I was no. trying to ask him politely and explain the situation. I have already <laughs> said you can take it. Well, thank you. Um, as much as I would like to, my own personal hobby is examined. Could be extra plane or material from the celestial beyond. It does seem you are more professional. That'd more the professionals cool. here. You know, work with this celestial metal with your cobbler skills. Make some sick, uh... I suppose I could make some rather interesting boots. Right. If we have leftover material, we know where to bring it. Well, if, of course, if you can, all, you can put in that good word for me with the academy, I, would, I think that I can do well there. I have no doubt that you would. However, um, mm. I think, does anybody else have any more questions for Mr. Luke here? Uh, I, uh, I guess well, the only other thing, well, I guess, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, can we take his holy symbol too? With the crack in it? 
Well, I was gonna okay. ask if I could possibly Just purchase take everything. Or, yeah, take the armor as well. It might be good for you know Scrubbing. pretending to be his brother. Maybe if people think that he's still alive, we can. Uh, I think most people know he's quite dead. I think. Mm. Uh, people, what about those people fake their deaths all the time? What about those common clothes over there? I think Saskia could probably use some of those. <laughs> you know what she I, does, her current was. I'm okay with you taking the holy symbol if you return it, but I'd rather hold on to my brother's other belongings. I'll buy it off you. I, it is not for sale right now. I have to clean John's it up. Like... I don't want to give that item to you yet. It's, uh, also, it's also worth more silver than I think you possess. You also don't rude. require, require the, the proper uh, level. Uh, the, this this, uh, this armor is level gated. Come back to me when you, you're you worth your salt. <laughs> well, maybe, uh, if we, maybe if I solve your brother's murder, then you'll give it to me. How about that? Perhaps. I suppose I can give you this, though, for now. Since you are working, I hope. He, he almost says something, and then he stops. Well, no, you're working to solve the murder. And uh, he does hand you that sack of silver. Uh, Me? <laughs> yeah, Danny, he'll actually probably hand it to Jacquette since he seemed to really want it. <laughs> um... Well, I was going to say, too, um, if we're down in the, the bedroom or heading back into the living quarters area, mm -hmm. uh, if I still have the tech magic out, I might as well just scan the room and see if I get a whiff of anything. Uh, really mostly the same stuff that uh, um, Bruce had noticed. The armor, of course, of course is magical enchantments yeah. on it. Um, if there's anything that we overlooked? Nope. In this section, it's all pretty clear. He... Um, this man really does live in very like within his means. Um, he doesn't have any magical tools. There's some like latent magical auras to some of the books that you presume is probably more so tied to the uh, university. Um, you know, they probably have the ability to track down their books if they go missing. Um, so that there's always kind of a, a slight aura on the books. You actually would even see one on the book that um, Fearn has as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about the um, uh, so the holy symbol, mm -hmm. the the magic that it's giving off, um, is there any sort of like tracking ability on that? Like like you being able to like use it so, to track similar magic. Like coming out of the the crack of the the holy symbol, is there like you know, if some some celestial being were to were to find this man and murder him, uh, like they know exactly where he is. Um, oh, I see what you're with, saying. With, I see what this, you're saying. Yeah. Um. So, give me an Arcana check. Um. Oh well, I don't know. It's eleven. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So with an eleven, I would say like. The closest thing you can think of for that is maybe you're thinking in your head, well, if oaths mean anything, there must be a way to keep track of things. All right. Maybe we shouldn't take this. I don't want a celestial being coming to kill us. <laughs> I don't want them coming here either. No, well, yeah, we, well, we, we can hold on to it. If it's emanating some magical <laughs> more magic... We should hold on to it. All right. Uh, I guess I'll put it. Help me uncover exactly what this is. Uh, Jacquet is going to take out the lead lockbox and say, ah. put it in here. If nothing else, it'll stop any uh, scrying Sorry. magic or divination magic. Perfect. Uh, Septimus will, will drop the bag of broken metal in there as well, along with the piece that he found. Okay. Um, perfect. And, uh, we could throw in the, all in the bag of holding if you want. 
Jack what puts it in the bag of holding. How much silver was well, we in the purse? We can put it in purse? the backpack if you would like. <laughs> <laughs> How many containers could we put things in? At least one. Uh, let's see. There was a third. Nope, that's not how much my brain just went. 36. There was 36 silver in there. Dang. What's so funny? <laughs> what I miss? <laughs> Sorry. These, these troublemakers are sending memes to each other, probably. Uh, <laughs> um, any other questions for Lucas? Or parting words? Lucas, you've been a very, uh, you know, you've been a great help. We hope to see you soon with some good news about your brother's investigation. I'm glad that we came and that you've been so uh, accommodating. I, I'm, I'm hopefully, you know, we will get this to rest soon. Um, if you need us, we go by iron and mana. You can fight. You could ask for us at the Harlequin Chalice, and I hand him my business card. He takes it and, and eagerly actually yeah. takes it. Um, as I imagine, you all are kind of gathering by the door to leave at this point. If any more information happens to turn up, or you're concerned about something, please feel free to reach out. Of, of course, and and, uh, and he kind of like nervously as he's walking you to the door looks and says, "Of course." Uh, he looks to Fearn. If you can give a good word in with the academy, but if not, also I um, uh, don't ha have much coin, but I am always interested in uh, books. Yeah academic study and you seem like the type to journey frequently to places where there might be interesting new material and I, I may not be uh, an academic who holds a degree from a prestigious academy but I am quite the scholar and okay, you, said that the, you said that the creature was gold plated from my reading celestials I do not wear armor in this hmm. way. Uh, commonly, celestial entities like planetars are usually not armored from my readings. They're very, uh, and Jacquette gestures to being buff. They say asses shaped like the gods. Uh, I don't know much about their, their glutes, but I do <laughs> know that they, from my readings, of course, this is these are textbooks that are referencing Decades, century-old knowledge. Gold plate well, armor is not their style. Gold, yes. Their weapons. Their vestiges, but not, not typically armored in that way. Mm. And I'd be happy to study some... other texts for you if you needed. Right. We have some. Uh... Oh, we have, we have an appointment with the academy in about two days. Uh, I will see if we can get you some books, or perhaps next time we are on an adventure, I will return and we can make a deal then. Unfortunately, this book that I have here is on loan. I, I will have to return it to them. Of course, of course. I simply would like to offer my services as a scholar for you, since you are helping me and my family. And I, do, so kind I today. do appreciate that, yes. We will do our best to help each other in the future. Thank All you. Right, get some, uh, get some, uh, make some breakfast, Lucas. Uh, we gotta go. <laughs> okay. Right? Sorry. Yeah, no, I know. You haven't eaten, right? You're still in your pajamas. <laughs> Give him a lollipop. Oh, you want a lollipop, uh, sir? I'm actually uh, gonna have one myself. Uh, what? I, uh, stop uh, badgering. He, he starts to like. He's been calm this whole time, and suddenly this <laughs> this manic energy from Bruce is causing him to become skittish. <laughs> yeah, well, Fearn just walks you're... out. <laughs> he, he takes the lollipop and then kind of like looks to you all and gives like a very like nervous nod and slowly keeping eye contact with Bruce unwraps it and puts it in his mouth. I have some work to do. 
Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Uh, and uh, campaign purpose, mechanical purposes, you have unlocked uh, 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 -da -da -da. Lucas as a ally who can do scholastic make work for shoes. you, or research, or make shoes for you. Mm. Um, he's very, like, very much like the like. If the academics are being too posh for you, you have a person who will pour over textbooks for you, um, and will Stay do research for listen. you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, did, did we just overlook the fact that Hugo and Luke's last name is Kane this whole time? <laughs> no, they are not. They are not uh, um, Haradrim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh I mean, Lu Lucas does seem like he would join the Haradrim. <laughs> Without a doubt. Um, but clearly a, a man eager for stories and to be part of something more important yeah. than just being a cobbler. Well... And, and easy to leverage to do things for you or help you or do things for him. All right, so we kind of have a good idea of what happened to Hugo. Uh, what do we want to do with this information? Well, the first thing that I would like to, very curious about is if I'd like to take those pieces back. Maybe I can go back to the Hard Quinn and Travis and see if we can piece them back together, get a little bit more information. I'm curious to know what it is. This 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 magic and nature thing, it's, it's boggling my mind. All right, let's go do that. That sounds like a good idea. Maybe, um, do we still want to see Lucy later? It can't hurt if we can understand more the connection between Martin and Hugo. Uh, it sounds like Hugo fucked over a lot of people in the path, past, so why was it this time that when he fucked over Martin, something happened? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it had to but, be whatever deal that he had struck up with him. I agree. Maybe it had something to do with that strange metal. Um, if you can't figure anything out, maybe bring it along. See if uh, Lindsay recognizes it. What was her name? Lisa. Lindsay. Huh? Lisa. Lisa. I don't know. Too many L names. Um, anyways, while you guys go do that, I'm going to go take care of some shopping. I'll see you later. Um, oh, see you later. Are you guys going Wait, to much... the Harlequin and Chalice or the Cask and Crow? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Cask and Crow. Cask and okay, Crow. cool. That's what yeah. I thought. Cask and Crow. Um, wait, hold on. Um, Gloveless, uh, I'm not really one for puzzles. Uh, do you mind if I tag along with you? I'm not. Yes, I do mind. Sorry, Fjern, maybe next time. Uh, and Jacquette, like, literally turns and starts to run away. <laughs> can I try and grab his arm before he bolts off? You can try to. <laughs> Let's get that grapple check. Athletics or acrobatics for you, Jacquette. Athletics for you, Fjern. This is a, sure. uh, a true a good test. Fight. Yeah, it's actually it's yeah. A very, yeah. Dirty 20. I'm so sorry. That's a 25. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I imagine like you, you do like you, you do wrap your hand around his arm, but he just so slipperily slicks, yeah. slicks his I way think out. He, he slips it out and like turns and start to does that like backpedal jogging as he's like, normally I would, but I'm going somewhere. You don't quite fit in next time though. And I fit in off. everywhere. You suck. That's totally not true. <laughs> <laughs> Jacquette disappears into the streets and you all can head towards the Cask and Crow to take a look at these metal pieces. Um, okay. Uh, all right, so um, let's uh, jump over to where Jacquette is going. All right. Uh, so Jacquette... Uh makes his way through the streets of Hyven up to the lighthouse district where he changes his attire uh, into that of LaRue, mm -hmm. uh, donning the trench coat, popping the collar, and then heading off to his contacts at the Leonin brothers. Bait and tackle or fish and tackle. What was it? Sorry, I I barely slept last night. I am. It's dead. okay. 
You're good. You're good. It's the uh, De Leon Brothers Butcher's Block and Tackle. Butcher's Block and Tackle. Okay, thank you. Fine meats, exotic fish, and supply. Um, but you have that, you know, the typical meeting there where you see uh, Andres outside uh, butchering uh, large fish and shark, uh, and you can head inside through the leather curtains where Alberto, his brother, would uh, agree to bring you down to the market. And down there, you're in that that big basement structure area where you see there are just shelves upon shelves with different scrolls, different vials. You see a glass container that has uh, various weapons in it, as well as more vials. You see vials of powder, vials of liquid. Um, you see there are books all over the place as well. Um, and of course, as you saw last time, there is the cage with the imp in there that is just sort of looking at you with a grin and snickering as you walk by into this dark space. And you see Alberto stands there and opens up a ledger that he keeps on him as uh, Andres kind of leans against the glass uh, uh, display case um, as he uh, puts out the cigar that he was smoking. As he seems to almost know that you don't like smoking now. <laughs> mm. um. What kind of stuff are you looking for, LaRue? Well, I'm going to be heading out of town for a while, and I need something that can hit from a distance, if you know what I'm saying, while I stay hidden. Looking for some kind of magical crossbow you might have. Uh, you know, one made for a true marksman. Oh, enchanted cr crossbows. Are you looking for a uh, hand crossbow? Light crossbow, heavy, something heavier? No, light's good. Something I can hold with two hands as I stare down, you know? All right, yeah, we have that sort of weapon available. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for something that can hurt more of those enchanted kind of creatures or someone with uh, armor, that kind. I don't got much magic myself, but I come across the magical entities often enough. I'd like that extra edge, if you know what I'm talking about. All right, then. We have a few things that we can spare with. Uh, or uh, just a simple magical crossbow. We're talking a plus one kind of item. I have a feeling. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, I think we can uh, part with one of those for 200 silver pieces. He nods and takes out uh, 10 gold, slides him across. Uh, I'm also looking for uh, a few other miscellaneous goods, if you will. Um, and he is going to read off a list mm -hmm. um, asking for an all purpose tool. Um, I believe is what it's called. I have an actual list somewhere. Wait, where'd it go? <laughs> um, an ever-flowing bottle. Uh, elemental gems. Oily. Are you looking for an ever-smoking bottle or the endless decanter? Oh, endless decanter. Okay. That's just, okay. I, yeah, I said both of them. Uh, <laughs> um... Dust of sneezing and choking. Dust of dryness. And, uh, shit, where'd my list go? Uh, dust of corrosion. Uh, 
okay, so elemental gems. I guess I could have typed this up and sent it to you. <laughs> elemental gems, the decanter, uh, dust of, give me the dusts again. Uh, so dust of sneezing and choking, uh, dust of dryness, and dust of corrosion. Sorry, but is is it really a magic item if it's just the dust of dryness? <laughs> just it's just dusty. It just makes it dusty. <laughs> just a bit dusty. Um. Okay. It's like I got the I got the 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 water flask of wetness over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So these elemental gems, decanters, the dusts. Was there something else? Uh, the dust, uh, an all-purpose tool. All-purpose tool. Um, and then he would also ask about this, uh, <sighs> the sword and the gun, the cartridges. The modules? Oh. Yeah, the module, uh, specifically for the, for Fjorn's, Fjorn's, Fjorn's sword. Hmm. So you see, uh, Andres, so first of all, when you drop down the gold for the crossbow, mm -hmm. Andres kind of like puts a hand up um, as you slide it towards him, almost like, no, 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 no. As you would see, Alberto grabs the coin uh, and, and takes it over uh, and starts to count it and puts it in a, in a satchel. Uh, there's a very, very clear divide in their responsibilities, mm -hmm. as you notice here, as just part of knowing these two brothers more and more. Alberto also rarely speaks. Right. Um, and he, he occasionally will kind of give off like curious sounds. Like, and you even hear him like, uh, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, like purring sometimes when you mention certain things, like certain items, like, mm -hmm. uh, as Andres still kind of maintains your attention and he looks at you. Oh, I don't know that we're, uh, newly business partners, LaRue, but didn't uh, take you for the caliber yet to be dealing with such illicit goods as modular armaments. Let's just say fell into my lap. And why look a gift horse in the mouth? Well, I think I'd have to see the item before I can uh, look into sourcing anything for you. Or are you looking to part ways with the item? Uh, let's put a hold on that conversation for now and turn to something else then. I, was also... I do know a few mm -hmm. of those uh, alchemists. And that, uh, well, actually, no, Bruce wouldn't have told you that. He told Septimus that. So he would say, uh, specifically, uh, the machinist, ether alchemist they call him. Uh, some of them in the black market trade uh, deal in these manifold armaments. It's risky stuff. You're not purchasing from a licensed seller. Can't guarantee the goods won't explode in your face. When we're dealing with junkers. Good to know. Maybe I hold off on that for now, then. Well, keep that stuff tight. You don't want any of the, uh, halcyonic bounty hunters after you. Please, the way I prefer to do business, no one will even... Be the wiser. As far as this other stuff, we should have no problem. We have, we should have these dusts on hand. I'm sure we have an all-purpose tool somewhere. We'll have to check the stores to see if we've got decan a decanter. We might have to source that for you. Uh, elemental gems. Yeah, we might have a guy for that. So it might take me a better part of the day to collect all this stuff for you together. 
And then uh, he's just going to kind of look around the shop. And I know you had mentioned a few items in here before, but he's specifically looking for something to Jacquette that kind of like screams isn't the right word, but something that makes him think of both Saskia and Fjern. Hmm. Okay. Uh, hmm. I might need a second to. Yeah, of course. Come up uh, with something for that. Uh, but there certainly would be something. I think. Um. So let's. That but... water vial of wetness would be great for Sask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's come back to that. Okay. Um. And we will jump back over to our other three as they go. Uh, back to the Cask and Crow. I, ho I hope you have the battle map prepared with broken pieces, and then I have to direct you to like rotate and move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some really, really, really uh, janky um, uh, mechanics for you to move the different pieces around. <laughs> you just dump a jigsaw. You, you just dump a jigsaw puzzle down on the table, and I just instruct you. So I put that piece over there. No, 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 that piece. <laughs> Number five, one eighty degrees. <laughs> I'm just imagining the Hellraiser puzzle box. <laughs> um, okay, so the the three of you go back to the Cask and Crow, and um, when you get there. Um, Kana, uh, the owner, would um, at some point uh, wave you all down and say, oh, hey, guys, uh, someone stopped by for you uh, not too long ago uh, while you were out. Um, said he'd come back later if you were around. Uh, it's from the Commodore's office? Oh. Well, <laughs> um... Did they mention? Well, did they give a name? Uh, or uh, he was really snooty. A letter. He was real snooty. Uh, said he he basically couldn't believe that he was doing this. That he had to come down here. Uh, didn't appreciate that. It's the nicest fucking tavern in the uh, lower city. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Doyle, I think his his name was. Uh, he didn't leave anything. He said he'd come back uh, around. Uh, uh, dinner time to see if he could catch you. Oh. Well, Jaquette would gladly hear, like to hear that. Yeah, um, do I... us a favor. When he does come back, uh, just tell him that we're uh, in a, a, a meeting and that he'll have to wait for us. Uh, no, we'll be back here for dinner time. Mm -hmm. We got plenty uh, of time. We'll, we'll be here. You, you know, we'll be in one of the private booths. Just tell him that we'll come find him and he should wait in the tavern. You know, that way you could really, like, he's got a lot of money. I'm sure he'll buy some food. You could do your, you know, regular spiel to, uh, you know, try and eke out some cash from him. Yeah, I'm, uh, uh contrary to the uh, dynamic we're currently engaging in where I'm delivering you a message, I'm not your secretary. Uh, <laughs> so I'll just let him know that if he comes by, I'll let him know that you plan to. To meet him. Uh, Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> we'll actually be grabbing a, a table here. I'll um, probably be here for quite, actually, for the rest of the evening. Um, Great, then you won't miss him. Excellent. Well, if you need anything, I'll be over there. And you can go ahead and grab him. As I'll go over, walk to the booth. Um, clear off some space although there's probably nothing even on there um gently pour out the pieces mm -hmm. take a look at what we're dealing with here okay um <clears throat> all right so uh you are you mostly approaching trying to piece these back together into whatever they were uh well first before i just piece well, i guess i i yes yes Okay. Short answer yes. <laughs> Short answer yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, Bruce uh, tries to make whatever tools we need if it looks like we need any tools to put everything back together. <laughs> uh, Fearn looks or interested. Puts out a welder. A... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I don't want to tamper with any of the material first. I just want to see if I can like, kind of piece the broken pieces so you kind of get like a 
a visual of what a general idea of what it was or if you can make out any words or not words or but symbols or whatever mm -hmm. Fian has like two pieces in his hand and he looks at him for about 30 seconds and then he's just like no nah, it, it, this isn't for me and he puts them down give, gives them back to Septimus and you know pulls out his book <laughs> absolutely um, okay, Septimus, uh, go ahead and give me a investigation check. Come on, B. Uh, can I, can Money. I be helping him? Absolutely. <laughs> Advantaged. Thank you. Hey, there we go. 25. Okay, great. Um, so it's going to take you a little while because you realize you have to kind of very carefully piece these together. There's quite a, quite a few of them. Um, but over the next, like, I'd say a couple hours, um, as, you know, Fearn is reading his book, maybe occasionally gives a yawn of, of boredom when he looks over to what you all are doing. Uh, Bruce, you occasionally like, no, 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 that, that, move that one here. Move that one here. No, look, there's clearly these two pieces of writing match up together. What makes this tremendously difficult is the fact that this is a foreign script to you. So, yeah. like, you have, like, you have to go based on the size of the shape and hoping that things connect properly um these runes are nothing that you either of you know um but after several hours of working together you believe you have structured it back into uh its shape that it should be um and the shape is so the shape is that of um a uh a tablet uh, a stone tablet uh, made of this gold material um, and you believe you've gotten the script in the right format um, it clearly is like uh, seems to be something uh, written upon this like in in you know line by line text it looks like uh, normal writing it's just not in a script you're familiar with these are less they don't appear to be like archa archaic or um, arcane sigils, you know, where it's like more a part of a magical equation. This actually seems like it's a written sentence of some sort or some mm -hmm. kind of uh, writing as opposed to just runes that indicate magic. Um, could, this I, been, oh, sorry. could this have been part of his oath or something that binded him contractually? That's a, that's a good thought. Uh, I'm not sure because based on what we I'm seeing and Maybe it is another symbolic meaning means of him breaking his oath. I, as many times as there's cracks in here. Uh, anyway, I'm going to write down all the words. <laughs> yeah, you can you can start to copy the script um, and it'll take you a while just because, again, you're unfamiliar with it to copy it ex exactly so that you, you know, don't have to keep this thing in this exact spot on this table. Uh, for the rest of the, the, the investigation. Can, can I peer over and see if I can decipher any of the words or shapes or meanings? Sure, give me an arcana, arcana check. I can read Abyssal and Infernal. That matters. It does not. Okay, I got a 16. <laughs> okay, um, I mean, there's not too much that you can uh, discern about the text itself, but I, what I will say, though, Fearn, is that this is very similar to um, some uh, items that you may have seen in your back home amongst the clans. Um, you are familiar with uh, oath stone traditions where someone does swear an oath over some kind of stone. This is a much more uh, literal, uh, or not literal, much more um, uh formal version of that like back in amongst your clan it's much more akin to here's this big ass rock that never moves and no one messes with swear your oath over it so that it is here for the rest of time um this is very clearly like a chiseled uh stone um where someone is inscribed potentially an oath to it you know after you hear septimus mention that as a possibility uh it does remind you somewhat of the oath stone rituals of home except you never knew of anyone who chiseled their oaths into the stones themselves. Yeah, I, I just confirmed the information. This does look similar to an oath stone I've seen in the past. Different language, of course, but I think your theory is correct. Mm -hmm. It was 
probably destroyed when the oath was broken. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if I can go a little further. It did, does this look right, Bruce? Are we confident that this like is accurate with the writings? Um, uh, yeah. Except, yeah. Except it's, it's, kind of study it. You know, Steps Smith will 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 dot his or double check everything and kind of like take another like, extra hour or so to kind of just look at it and just be like, did I miss anything? Yeah, I'll say if you spend that extra hour, you can feel with Bruce very confident that this is the correct um, formation. Uh, uh, I'll I'll say you you know you got a twenty five on the on the roll. The DC was twenty. This is that that you with this hour of st extra study, you know for sure this is the correct formation of these pieces. You maybe like move a few of them and notice that it doesn't quite match up properly, and that this is probably the only. Yeah. um shape and you what i will also say is like you do notice like there are no missing pieces it is yeah. complete i was yeah. gonna say sean that piece that we found at the scene of the crime was that used or was that no something else? i guess it's a good point okay. you find and i'll say even especially with this extra hour you find that the piece that you found at the crime scene does not belong to this this tablet right um does like the script on it match up at all yes i mean there's not a lot of script on the the, the piece that you recovered but i mean like a... not like that script but like like a like a like a like a symbol or like a curve or something that like like looks like it's like yeah. identical to a spot on the tablet i would say yes yes you would notice that the script does like have um, some matching places on the reconstructed yeah. tablet um i'll also say that the um the piece that you found looked to have like a rounded edge to it where it was like a a, a golden plate round plate this where is this a is a, a tablet got it um interesting uh well, when we take out the holy symbol um does it does there anything that indicates that this tablet might be related to the holy symbol or no no they don't look they're not made of similar material or anything like that um it it seems as though they are they are separate okay and I the didn't magic mean like, like it, it, i didn't mean like fitting wise but like if there's any like the symbols that might be used to the same on it nope the symbols are no there's no text on the holy symbol um and even with like earlier when you were doing detect magic like they don't have matching heat signatures so to speak got it was there any sort of resonance that we noticed between the piece that uh you know didn't fit in with because you said it was the same type of magic as oh the yes solved o stone yeah you would easily be able to even 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 with your without arcana, arcana checks just with your baseline sort of insensitivity to magic that these very much so resonate on the same frequency hmm like they are 100 like no investigation needed these are connected in some way at the very least of similar um make and magic um can i attempt to mend the pieces together absolutely um let's see Yeah, so I'll say it'll just take you a little longer than the one minute typical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It it's like technically it's like, several it's, it's each pieces. Piece, it's each, yeah. each piece. You have to do that. Yes. Yeah. So I'd say it'll take you a little while, but you are able to do it. And I'll ask, and this is not to determine success. This is just a add it on. Um, Septimus, give me a Arcana check or a religion check. Okay. Are you helping him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and hold my hand the whole time. Research buddies. <laughs> 21. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll say with a 21, you're able to do this rather swiftly, like uh, quicker than you expected to. Um, it only takes you an hour as opposed to probably several hours like it would have taken. Um, and uh, um, 
there is some magical resonance that as you're doing this, you're slowly like kind of like taking in the magic of this as you're repairing it piece by piece and the pieces are slowly coming together, uh, almost like you're 3D printing it, um, <laughs> that you, uh, you're concentrating so hard on it that you feel by the time you're finished with it, you feel a slight burning sensation uh, at your back where your robotic arm connects to your your uh, your spine. When I'm completely finished with it? Or like... when, once the tablet is full again. <sighs> like, is it painful? Or it's just kind of like a tingle? It's, a, it's more of a burning tingling. It's not like severe. It's more like uh, like almost feverish. Um, and then within five seconds, uh, the uh, the stone uh, breaks apart again immediately as you would hear the sound of a bell. Just Does him it, or both? It, it, no, everyone in the booth would hear that there would be this resonance like a bell that rings. Like almost like as it fell apart, instead of it making like a cracking noise, it made the resonance of a bell, a church bell. Um, uh, as soon as, it, like basically like five to 10 seconds after you finish completing it, it shattered itself again. And then the tingling stopped. And the tingling stopped. Uh, uh, wait, wait, didn't we uh, hear from Omar that uh, there was a death toll Yep, there was a loud bell, and then the big monster came. Yeah, uh, sh shit. Let's, um, let's go outside. How are you so calm? I was like, I just gotta yeah, just jump out of the booth quickly, just kind of just like, just look around. I'm not gonna jump outside, but I'm just like looking around. It's like, how busy, is it still pretty empty where you'd be able to see? It's, it's still pretty empty. Uh, a Bru uh, Bruce, like, quickly just takes all the gold pieces and just puts it back in the satchel lead box mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's both of his hands on like bruce's shoulders like for i don't know i like keep him in his mind like, keep him more ground he's like you said he was heavy right like you feel anything <laughs> ignoring everything <laughs> that they're looking, doing looking Fearn, Fearn, uh like walks outside and like starts uh just basically patrolling the um the inn to see mm -hmm. If anything's coming, keeping his eye out for the sky because it was said that it came flying in. Um, Tetris and Bruce, you hear a uh, uh, you hear like uh, a scream in the back as a, as you hear a pot uh, like a, like a tough like iron uh, um, cast iron pot clamor on the ground. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, Bruce, can can Bruce see that far? Uh, you'd have to you'd have to approach closer to the kitchen area. All right, all right. All right. Bruce, Bruce, just, 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 just wait. I could just wait another minute. Okay. And as the two of you are waiting there in this quiet tavern, there's like no one else there. You start to like almost like shake at any like creak of the wood of the old like veneer of this tavern. Uh, as Fearn's outside uh, looking around. Um, it's all very quiet. Windows seem to be a little darker. As Kana comes walking out, as she clearly has a rag over a burn on her arm. Just fucking... <clears throat> and for flame. You How are right? you two? Uh, uh, nothing. Sorry, we were... Oh, uh, sorry, did you hear that? Yeah, sorry, I was, you know... Dumb cook. Uh, cooking some stew for this afternoon splashed me with it and i smacked him and it went flying all over the place yeah uh, did you hear a bell no i didn't hear any bell oh okay it... what are you waiting for church i i guess i'm going crazy uh you are you sure you two are okay do you need anything need some water beer booze uh, Stu? It's not even lunchtime yet, but I'll take a beer. All right, all right, all right. She goes over to grab you a, 
a draft. She looks to Septimus. Milk? Water? Uh, uh, tea? Water's, I don't water's know. Fine. You, okay. Water's fine, please. Uh, Fearn walks in after, uh, you know, patrolling the area and looks at Kana and says, everything all right in here? Oh, yeah, just got to burn. Yeah, okay, your two friends look a little freaked out about something. Well, they have a right to be, I guess. They're not, um, they get scared easily sometimes. Uh, you, you want to, I, I can take care of that burn for you if you want me. Oh, thank you. Uh, beer's on me then. Uh, I'm gonna cure wounds her. Yep, and you see the burn, like clearly, like it's actually a pretty bad burn, like from the the hot stew, and it clears up the redness. Any kind of swelling clears away. Um, I imagine as you drop a, <laughs> a piece of metal onto it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, she thanks you, gives you a beer, and the three of you return to your seats um, after this somewhat. Somewhat scary situation. Still not sure what happened exactly with this. Um, but I think that's where we're going to take a break. Let's leave that for a rest for now until uh, everyone gets. Yeah, but what if, he's like, what if he's like, just comes at night? You know, we initiated it and. Well, we'll just take watches like we always do. I don't want my skull to be. <laughs> You're not going to get your face bashed in. Don't worry, I'm here. And as as I'm sure Bruce squirms more about this anxiety, we are going to go to a break and we'll be right back, folks. Stick around. We'll be see you in five minutes. Welcome back, everybody. We drift in all the works. Ah, you're welcome. Uh, so our heroes, our adventurers, uh have questioned the brother of the deceased hugo pascal uh lucas pascal learned uh, a little bit about uh the brother as well as found more evidence of the events that happened uh and also may have made an ally in this brother who is sort of a back alley scholar of sorts who might be able to do research for them and then they separated, and, and uh, Jacquette went to the black market run by Andres and Alberto de Leon, his new uh, business partners. And the rest of them went back to... What? Uh, I said lovers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a, just a feline three-way. Uh, <laughs> incestuous. Uh, anyway... <laughs> Uh, the rest of them went back to the Cask and Crow where they learned that Doyle, the executive oh, no. assistant to the Commodore, had was looking for them and was going to be returning around dinner time. They also spent a few hours piecing together the shattered tablet that they found. Uh, when attempting to repair that with the mending spell, Septimus uh, began to feel feverish and burning around his own metallic appendage. Uh, and then the tablet, upon being reconstructed, shattered itself again with a toll of a bell. Panicked, they thought they were summoning some vengeful angel to come smite them. They uh, began to look around, but fortunately, no one showed up to smash their skulls. Uh, and they began to look into some other things. Uh, or were waiting for Jacquette to return. So we're going to jump back in with Jacquette. Uh, as he is hanging out in this uh, in this place, looking at esoteric items, as Alberto would come up to you at this point, uh, you see behind him, Andres is gathering all of your stuff into a bag. Uh, and Alberto looks down and says, All right, then. No. Your bill for the remaining goods, sir. Uh, well... I suppose we should go through them, make sure you wish to purchase all of them. And you see, he does have, like, half-moon spectacles that hang at the end, end of his feline nose. Um, he has significantly less of a mane than Andres. Uh, granted, Andres' mane is all kind of, like, cut up with scars. Um, yeah. This guy clearly does not spend his time in the dangerous part of this business. Um, he's very much so protected by his brother. Much more formal attire versus the the uh, bloodied uh, butcher apron of Andres. Uh, he is in a suit. Uh, 
You were looking for elemental gems, correct? That's right. Any specific type that you were looking for? Uh, maybe uh, earth or water. Your water. Okay. And were you looking to purchase more than one, sir? How much is one of these gems gonna run me? Elemental gems, due to their difficulty of acquisition, uh, are 200 gold. Sorry, 200 silver each. I'll take one of these gems. Excellent. And would you prefer earth or water? Let me think. If I was a friend of mine, what kind of gem might I want? If this is a gift. No, I don't. I was just musing to myself, hoping that the gods uh, above might answer me. Water. <laughs> a water. <laughs> water. <laughs> water, of course. We will acquire an uh, elemental emerald. Or, you know what? Actually, can I take... Uh, <laughs> I'll take one of water and one of earth. Very well. We will acquire each for you. Now, this decanter of endless water that you were mm. seeking, we do have some of those in our supply. Much rarer. These are 500 silver each. All right. Let, let me see what this bill's going to come up to. <laughs> Where's my calculator? Okay. It is agreeable to you. 500. You said you had a lot of these decanters? Not a lot, but more than one. How much are the dusts going to cost me? The dust will be 100 silver each. All right. I'll take it. And uh, the all-purpose tool you seek? What uh, grade of quality were you looking to acquire? Plus one, plus two. Plus one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will run you 250 silver. All right, maybe we uh, cut out the decanter. <laughs> <laughs> so the two gem, so <clears throat> the two gems, mm -hmm. all-purpose tool, the dusts. Does that come out to nine hundred and fifty silver? That is correct. That sounds good. As well as something else that I'm going to shop for. Oh, take your time looking around. Uh, could we interest you in any other more... Uh, uh, Job-oriented supplies? We have a myriad of poisons available. Special... Lockpicks, mm. special keys, vellums of illusions. Some poison. 
might be good. Something both ingestible and for wounds. Of course. We can take a look at some of our options. How much are you willing to spend for your poisons? Couple hundred, uh, silver? I believe we may be able to work something out. Uh, of course, your simple, uh, your simple serpent's venoms will do with injury, though they don't always work ingestibly, depending on the species of those who are poisoning. But, uh, perhaps we could supply you with a pale tincture for 250 silver pieces, uh, which has been known to be ingestible as well as injurious. That sounds mighty fine to me. Uh, and of course, if you're looking to spend a little bit more, we can give you an oil, the oil of budget. Which will uh, affect the creature no matter how it is contacted with them. Uh, causes uh, unconscious states and damage for 24 hours. Four hundred silver, though, for that. I'll take the pale tincture. And uh, does that come with an antidote, or do I have to pay extra? Well, if you're looking for an antidote, that will cost extra. How much more are we talking? Uh, since you're buying it uh, with significantly other large purchases, we could provide an antidote for fifty silver pieces. Fantastic. Take the tincture and it's antidote. Certainly. While I'm packaging this all up for you, feel free to peruse the shop. All right. And uh, Jacquet, masquerading as LaRue, is going to walk around uh, looking for cheaper odds and ends. <laughs> of course. Uh, Conscious that while his uh, coin purse seemed limitless at a time, uh, <laughs> it is now quickly dwindling. Yes, yes. Once you once you get into the game of buying magic items, uh, it, the uh, the cost is rather high. Um, of course, uh, you see as Alberto goes goes to gather your things together, <clears throat> he does turn back to you and goes, and. Uh, I don't advise that you uh, talk to the imp if it tries to ask you anything. And he walks away. As you look over and the grinning imp is still staring at you. Uh, and we'll move on. Okay. From there. Um, and uh, we can bring everyone back together at this point. So I'll say uh, this is going happening while they're doing their puzzling together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so Jacquet, you walk in as the three of them, I'm sure, are, are still hanging out in the booth. Welcome back, Loveless. Did you uh get into that tight space you were looking for? A tight space. Yes. I see what you mean. Because you don't quite fit in. Because you're big. 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 You know, I apologize, Fear, and sometimes I don't think I give you enough credit for how clever you actually are. Go fuck yourself. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, as he sits down, uh, and you see in his hand, uh, he's got this wondrous item. Uh... It looks like a simple screwdriver that can transform into a variety of tools. Got there. 
Uh, just a uh, new item I was uh, playing around with. Uh, seems right up your alley. Where'd you, you get Bruce. it? Bruce. Oh, I know a guy. Where's the gun? Where's the What's weapon? His... What? Is there a sword that comes out? What? No, this is... Not everything needs a blade or a barrel at the end of it, Fjern. Some things in life are a little more finesse. But but it couldn't hurt to have, like, a little knife. I mean, I always imagine an all-purpose tool to be more of, like, a Swiss Army knife. Um... It is. Okay. Uh, it is. And yeah. so he But similar like... to Bruce's, it like can take the form, like it can magically turn into, um, you know, additional tools as necessary. Like it, it like, I guess it's more so it's kind of like there's more tools in it than, uh, than there should be. Like Wait, you, you, Bruce has an all purpose. He, he doesn't have the same one. He has, oh, a, yeah. uh, he has yeah. a, a much more mundane one. This, this I one see. is, is significantly nicer than the one Bruce has. His is just one that he can like, like what you're actually thinking of, like a Swiss Army thing that can turn into many different yeah, tools. It's 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 a Leatherman, but you, when you open it up, it's whatever tool you need it to be. Uh, yes. you, you pay this for the one. Brand. This one provides actual like right. bonuses. It's a plus. It's a plus one item for an artificer, so it's much better right. than 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 his mundane one. Uh, and then as he's kind of playing with this. Uh, I don't know if you want me to do a sleight of a hand check, uh, but all of a sudden you see there are two gems on the table. Uh, one emerald and one sapphire, right? Is it's that... uh, it's yellow diamond is what Earth is. Oh, okay, yellow diamond and emeralds for the water, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the two gems appear as he's just kind of playing with this uh, all-purpose tool, and he goes, and of course these might also be of interest to you, boys, hmm? Where are you? Where did you get these? These are ah. So you recognize them? Uh, actually, I don't think Bruce would know. Bruce would see the gem, but he wouldn't know that they're infused uh, with anything. I or mean, he... you you would probably be able to because, like, when they're infused with them, they do have distinct characteristics. Like, they look like they contain something. Like the emerald. You remember looking when you studied the water elemental emeralds that they had it looked like there was roiling water underneath the surface got it okay mm -hmm. all right um what how, how did you it's kind of dangerous to be just whittling between your fingers i put that down <laughs> he puts them you? down <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you want to be quite careful like you don't want to tamper and have anything, any mistaking the elemental energy surge out? I, I, we want to give me that sleight of hand check that we mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. That's a 15. You're good. You're good. I was only going to uh, have anything happen if you got a nat one. <laughs> that's understandable. And uh, did you get, uh, what else did you get? Also, where did you go? I said I know a guy. All right, what's the guy's name? Ah, it doesn't matter. Uh, all right. Uh, did you get ammo at least for your weapon? No, Proper I was going to buy that somewhere uh, on the cheap. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is, so this is more high-end place is what you're telling me. It's a place for getting interesting items. Oh, got it. And I got just it. know that you are a very practical, no, oh, jeez, practical individuals, and you would appreciate some practical items for our coming adventures. All right, yeah, I'm not going to get involved in that, but that's great to know. I suppose it is uh, good to have some, you know, Weapons that will keep us safe. What are these little creatures inside? I'm like tapping one of the. Uh... Uh... Would you not please, as Tetris tries to like pawn like man and like slide him over to himself. 
ah, I guess he's chosen. And then uh, Jacquette tosses the all-purpose tool to Bruce. Uh, 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 as he goes, I have no use for these things. I mean, I do, but like, not really. Uh, consider it more of a... Uh, Gift, I guess, right? That's what people do. They give each other gifts. My gift to you. Oh, well, thank you, Jack, right? Uh, just like hey, side hey. eyes to be in for a second. Say, what is it you want in return? Oh, please. I am hurt. Why do you think I want something in return? Because you always do. Uh, Okay, that's fair. Uh, I, I am nothing but aware of my actions at times, uh, willing to admit my mistakes. I just... You know, I understand that sometimes I can be a bit of a prick. I know, I know this about myself. Uh, I'll just say, uh, you guys have been kind of dicks to me recently. Um, and... Oh. Look, I just wanted to do something nice for you. Now, please do not look these gifts in the face. Hmm? They are simply gifts, and I hope you appreciate them uh, and understand that I am here to work with you all. Right. As a team. And while sometimes I may be selfish in my actions, uh, at the end of the day, I'm not going to fuck you guys yeah, over. Seriously, okay, so just, like, just stop. It, it, it's painful to listen to. Okay, you're, well, fuck you, Fear. You're fine. Just thanks for the gifts. I'm sure they'll be great in battle or whatever you use that doodad for. I, I We appreciate you looking out for the team. Thank you. Just, you know, maybe let Saskia know when she gets back that I did this. I I think uh, you might need to be a little bit less of an asshole to her. I don't think gifts are really her thing. I mean, bits and bobs, maybe get her a seashell, but... No, okay, again, she... <clears throat> Thank you. We're I'm going, going up then. to my room. Uh... Before before you go, oh, you should okay. know we discovered something somewhat interesting and a little frightening at first. Um, yeah, we might all see the open... same room. <laughs> so this doesn't take any of the pieces out, but he holds up the bag that has the, the coins in it. We were able to piece together what this used to be. It seems it was a, a, a tablet with etchings written on it. Bruce actually uh, copied them down on a sheet of paper over here. None of us can read it. However, I attempted to mend the broken tablet. And once in, upon doing so, about five seconds afterwards, the tablet shattered again. And we, each one of us, heard the toll of a bell. Similar to what Omar had described, he had heard. Sean, um, I don't know if you were aware of this, but when I became a level three rogue uh, mastermind, uh, mm -hmm. I took up two languages, one being Elvish and the other being Celestial. Mm -hmm. Do I under recognize any of these words? On the uh, tablet? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right, because you wrote it down, and you could show it to him that way. Um, <clears throat> no. Okay. Um, wait one second, actually. Okay, that's fine. As Jacquette puzzles over these things, he looks over it as he's like, I still don't know if I understand this or not. 
Hmm. Uh, but he goes, um, toll of a bell, uh, like Omar described when the angel disappeared. Right. And then Did there is the. Ah, it's somewhat of a relief. Ooh. Uh, you know, what if it also happened when it arrived? I, we don't know. Well, Omar said he only heard the bell when it left. All right, all right, all right. It, it actually was also seemed in like... the temple district where they probably have a lot of bells. Uh, we don't know that. I think you're using your knowledge of uh, Christianity. Uh, actually, Muslim. Actually, yeah, you know, never never mind. A lot of religions <laughs> use bells. Fucking weirdos. Uh, you, you do not recognize the script. Okay, so. that's fine. Uh... <clears throat> um, a lot of buffering going on. Um, um well, uh, well, while that's happening, um, we also heard from uh, oh, Douglas yeah. Doyle, Doyle. <laughs> yeah, Doyle's coming to talk to us, and uh, you know, we Dinner. still have to talk to Lisa. I think her name was over at the um. You know the the, the revelers. Yeah, we don't we don't have to. We could just get a nice meal. Talk we may not have time for Lisa, but yeah, it depends on how completionist you all are about this investigation. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose she probably won't have much more information about now that we've confirmed. We've learned part. Of, we've learned quite a bit with this item here. But I think next move is to decide for what this means. If anybody can read this, I think Lisa would give us Martin's side of this situation. We understand where Hugo is coming from, some of his uh, uh, wants and needs, um, <laughs> desires. Yes, we understand Hugo's side of this as much as we can, and if we get Martin's, it might be. More of the story, though you are right. It seems this artifact, um, which reminds me, which is why I wanted to go, maybe the sound of the bell that Omar heard was not the angel leaving, but it was actually the shattering of a tablet like this. Maybe it took something with it, and all that was left was that one piece? Uh, but I'm going to find the one piece and become king of the pirates. <laughs> That's a second One Piece joke today. Sorry, I watched the live action show and it was it brought back a bunch of fond memories from watching that anime. Um, it's a good one. It's never it's never gonna end. Fingers crossed. You don't know. There's a plan. Anyways, just like there's a plan here. Uh, <laughs> is there? Is, my brain is farting on itself. That's okay. Well. Well, um, how about we just uh, split the party and uh, some of us talk to uh, Lisa and the others wait here for Doyle. As far as time works, it doesn't really help us. <laughs> I, Let's it, see what so... Doyle has to say. And if we're feeling up to it, we'll go see Lisa afterwards. Yeah. Lisa, that, Lisa. That sounds like a good plan Lisa, to me. Lisa. <laughs> Thanks, DM. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> God I was really hoping that Celestial would come in handy, but okay, fine. Spit in my face, why don't you? The 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 redstone of Asia. Yeah, all you guys got to do, someone's got to learn comprehend languages. Yeah, you hear that, artificers? <laughs> yeah, it's we in got our you list. Gifts. It's in our list. Right? <laughs> Didn't hear it. <laughs> anyway. You all hang out for a little while waiting for uh, Doyle to arrive. You click uh, B for waiting. Um, <laughs> That's my favorite bingo number. <laughs> um, but as the uh, sort of dinner crowd starts to come in, um, you all... Uh, oh my god, my computer keeps sounding off notifications, but even when I have streamer mode on. Ding. Sorry, audience having to hear my adobe updating uh anyway uh 
dinner time comes around, um, and eventually you would see uh, uh, dinner time. Uh, <laughs> the door opens, and you see Doyle again. He's still standing in that, uh, you know, he's got that very staunch, um, uh, stiff, starchy uh, suit on, uh, pale as hell, like before, those red eyes, uh, the... Uh, other than the black hair, the Astarion tre treatment, um, <laughs> uh, and mm -hmm. he is he is followed by uh, by another uh, younger clerk um, as he does kind of comes in and just starts to slowly look around before noticing you and wandering over. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Iron and Mana, right? It's us. Don't wear it out. No, wear oh. it out. Tell everyone you know. How so, much we... Of course. You. Uh, happy to see that you have some taste in your taverns, your public houses. Um, can I join you? Please. Jacquette says, offering a seat next to him. Uh, and you see he sits and he immediately puts his hand out to call over Kana. And when Kana comes rushing over seeing him, he does not like wait at all for her to say anything. He very like rudely puts in an extensive order um, for uh, for a appetizer for the table. And then he orders uh, a bottle of very specific wine for the table as well. Uh, and uh, like enlists it off in that way, very like, uh, we'll take the... Uh, the charcuterie uh, for the table, but uh, no, uh, none of the uh, green olives, uh, extra uh, of the smoked meats, and uh, uh, not too many Cornish crackers shows, either. Cornishones. Uh, Cornishones for the, the horned gentleman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this exact bottle of wine, if you have it. Uh, if you don't have that, then this exact bottle of wine. Uh, and anything the rest of you would like. Ah, oh, sure, awesome wine too. Well, wine is for the table, of course. But um, uh, of course, if, if they happen to have any Voidberry jam to go with that charcuterie. And he 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 like looks to Kana, but then looks right back at you, Septimus, like sort of like impressed at your taste there. Uh, and he's like, mm, of course, if you have any Voidberry jam, I know it's hard to come by these days, but if you've got any, uh, certainly. Would go well with the charcuterie. Uh, anything else? I think I am all set. Thank you so much. Yeah, that that oh. sounds great. I was hurting for the gherkin. <laughs> uh, and you see, he he like uh, the clerk that he brought with him does not sit down with you guys. Is like just like standing next to the table, like it's awkwardly. <laughs> awkwardly. So, like, yeah. Quiet gestures to an empty seat next to like Bruce or something. Like, <laughs> is your. Uh, friend going to join us uh, and you see uh you see um doyle is like taking out his own like handkerchief and not using the towels they have there and putting it into his shirt oh, no they are working right now so okay uh shall we wait for the food and wine for business or do you want to get right into it we can we can wait. Dive, no, dive right in. Well, uh, <laughs> and he looks between the two of them, and then back to uh, Bruce, and then to uh, <laughs> Jacquette, um and Septimus, and goes. Fair enough. I suppose we should get right into it. Uh, well, I delivered your letter to the Commodore as I promised. Uh, Which is your job. <laughs> yes, you don't know the full extent of my work, uh, Mr. Uh, what was it? Gloveless. Touchard. Touchard, of course. Uh, a part of that work is filtering, if you will. Uh, but, of course, uh, as I promised to you, your letter made it through and was not filtered out. Uh, and it just so happens that the Commodore's office may have some need 
or a group of adventurers. <laughs> That's great news. Tell us, what's the job? Um, nothing too extreme. Not really a, a job, so to speak. Not a quest, as you might call it, or an adventure, or whatever. More of a, a little bit of work. Uh, you see, you, I'm sure, understand the governor's visit is happening tomorrow. Of course. As I mentioned when I first spoke to you, Jacquette Touchard, uh, there is a, not a lot of adventuring bands, uh, and we have not seen an official adventuring crew in Hyven for quite some time. Given that there is a shortage of prestigious and renowned adventurers who have uh, much larger resumes and references and who uh, claim more widespread fame, uh, you are what we have. Iron and manner. You are well, what I'll... is available. Well, I'll let you know an inside uh, adventurer trade secret. All those people with their bloated resumes, they're, they're, they haven't done half the stuff that they say they have. They just have the money to back themselves up. And, you know, w w I'm sure that, you know, we have a bunch of more accolades that can be backed up if you really did the investigation. So which is it for you, Bull? You just have money to pay for stories, or have you actually done these stories? Of course we've done them. I'll be honest, uh, I'm a little ashamed I didn't bloat our resume more. Yes, in, in we a, we left a... we left him out of the resume building uh, conversation for that exact reason. No, you didn't. I wrote the letter. <laughs> well, like I said, uh, your resume, while not unimpressive, was not what we would usually go for in a adventuring band. But we prefer adventurers to sell swords and criminals. That's good. So getting into it, what is the job? Well, the Commodore is working with the governor to impress upon him, but also impress the citizenry uh, with a bright future. Uh, he has a fantastic announcement tomorrow that will certainly be an economic boom to the uh, Asia, as well as uh, generally uh, good news. But uh, it not always as exciting for the common folk or those uh, who seek out stories. What we're asking of you is if you can, uh, if you would not mind being showcased during the parade as one of the band of heroes of Hyven. It's the selfless Hyven's adventurer. <laughs> you, you see like so much physical pain on his face when you say that. We, and literally everyone at the table except him. <laughs> <laughs> but Crescent Heart, it's like I was right the whole time. We should have just gone with that. Uh, yes, yes. Sight unseen, we agree. We would love to be a part of your parade. Why? Sean. What? What's Wait. with this party and saying yes to things before even oh. hearing the whole story? Like, Hold this on. isn't even the first person or the first time this has happened. <laughs> Wait, so you're just going to come in here, you're going to... Are we being paid for this? To walk in a parade? No, the exposure is the payment, my friends. <laughs> ah, this is fantastic! <laughs> but what, what will we actually be required to do? Is there... Sure. A do bodyguarding hold... situation? Do we have to hold signs to... that say, Go, oh, yeah. Governor? I would be happy to explain further. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> you are quite literally jumping ahead of yourselves. We get excited. As he looks I'm at, sorry. as he looks at, like, Jacquette, who's, like, up a little bit at the table. We all uh, get excited. Excitement. Pouring himself another <laughs> glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> what this would require of you. No, you do not need to be uh, we don't necessarily need you to be a part of the parade itself. Uh, but what we do need you to do, or we would ask you to do is to be on stage uh, with the governor and commodore 
central portion of the event. And if you have it within you, some sort of show of strength would be appreciated, some show of ability. Uh, if you don't have anything that's fair uh, enough, uh, just looking, when he kind of looks at you all, adventurer-like is good enough. Uh, you will be sort of a representative of the good uh, hard-working folk of Hyven, as opposed to the more unsavory uh, shell sword work of other groups. Uh, you know, the heroes of uh, of uh, whatever that town was that Bit below grass. grass. Uh, you truly have actually saved innocent lives, as opposed to the cutthroats that normally do the work. In these towns. Um, so there'll be a small speech. You'll probably be on stage for a minute or two. Uh, and if you have a show of strength, a performance of sorts, as he looks to Jacquette, uh, we can squeeze some time in for that. Uh, of course. And as compensation, uh, you will have five minutes uh, with the governor and the commodore. Just with the governor and the commodore. Uh, yeah. uh, Do you not think that is an opportunity for a burgeoning adventuring party? I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity. Just where are we meeting the governor and commodore? It, in open area, in closed behind closed doors, where where is this meeting being held? I've got a lot of questions. Well, I hope you can fit them into five minutes. Well, I am just surprised how trustworthy you are, That's, or you are to us. We hardly think that there's much you can do to bumble it. Hopefully, it'll be right after the event within the private booth of the governor and Commodore within the festival grounds. I'm sure you saw some of the uh, staging being built uh, in the Harbor District. Yes, yes. What, when will you, um, I know everything's tomorrow. Do you need an answer immediately tonight? Preferably. Do you mind if we consult? Quickly, of course. If you'd like to discuss it a little bit further, of course, I can give you some privacy. Yes, uh, if, you, if you don't mind while they're preparing the rest of our charcuterie. There's a nice bathroom that's like down the hallway a little bit. You can... I, I recommend the second stall. Let, let's let's just let's us go. He could stay here with his fancy handkerchief. That's true. Yeah, well, let's, let's take a step back. Yes, why we, don't we, you we, all go retreat to we, the second stall in the bathroom? We, we can all stuff into my stall. closet room. <laughs> let's <laughs> just step outside and talk. Uh, so we do that. Um, I gotta say, yeah, you step out into the, the you step out into the alleyway. The streets are busy um, outside, um, but you have that kind of little alleyway that's a little bit more private that you can discuss things in by the cask and crow. This um, this idea seems pretty good. I mean, we're not really being asked to do much, but stand there. I mean, Jaquette will get some uh. Maybe some ca uh, clout from singing, putting a performance on, and uh, sing. Well, he did ask for a feat of strength, so maybe you could throw some <laughs> magic out there into your performance. I don't know. If you want me to lift something, I guess I can do that. If we do something, it'll be together. Because yeah. just having me go up there and doing some fancy tricks is all well and good, but to show that we are a group of adventurers that work together, 
we would need to coordinate something minor, of course, but just something to show that we have some aptitude for this. I'm just saying, like, if you work in your act, it's your portion. Well, we can figure that out later, but it it seems that, like, we're all on board that we want to do this. Because, I'll be honest, I am totally for doing it. For the chance to to meet the the governor. I I, I feel like this is just too too good to be true. I, but... This yeah. is what happens when you go adventuring with Jacquette Duchard, my friend. I didn't think this Luxstone, you know, did anything. Luxstone? By the way, did you, you attune said... to that? <laughs> what? No, I didn't attune to okay. it. <laughs> no. I don't yeah, mean to sound too stone. eager for someone to attune to it. <laughs> you kind of sound a little <laughs> eager. Though. Thanks, Luxstone? Yeah. I thought you said that was nothing. Yeah, what is luck anyway? What, what do you mean, what is luck? There's literally gods of luck. Do you, I mean, uh, you know. I thought it was all bullshit, you know. (laughs) Bullshit. People say magic and the gods are bullshit. But, I mean, there are people that say that the elemental spirits are bullshit. But we all know that's not true. People say that when you die, you just die and nothing happens afterwards. And that the afterlife is bullshit. But I'll tell you what, it's not. Well, I didn't attune to it because I just thought I was weird you know it's just like the way i understood it was like good fortune you know more likely to yeah be fortunate so i i don't know i didn't tune to it you oh, want no, it bruce you could use a little more luck in your life always so right. down on yourself did you both not remember the fact that i read a note saying that that uh you know gem coming from that statue was like cursed or not cursed, but like the downfall of all those spooky ghost things that we killed. Oh. I believe that letter claimed to think it was unlucky. However, there are many people that wish to place their blame on other things. You know, I've never heard of that god. Clearly that god is just a piece of shit and didn't do his job protecting his people. True, but I mean, whatever killed that... that giant storm that killed them there there's a lot of gods that could have stopped that but they all just let it happen all right so, well anyway we're getting we're getting, we're getting way stuff. off track yeah. i think i think we've all agreed that we want to do this um bruce you seemed a little hesitant in there did you have any reservations no i just i felt like there was gonna be a catch that's all Oh, I'm sure there will be, but we'll handle it when it happens. Going up there, being paraded with the governor and the commodore, puts us on their side. Whatever that means. That's a good point. The people of the city seem... I don't know if they mistrust the governor, but the governor is coming in and making changes, and people... Do not like change. If we are seen with him and part of this initiative of change, we will then be linked with this idea of change. For better, for worse, is all I'm saying. I think it's for the better. I think having our name up with the governor is a good thing. I could agree more. I know firsthand of the the many changes that he has held across the land here, um, all for the benefit of the people and uh, for prosperity of the islands. Oh, actually, I'm thinking now to the story of a adventuring party, the Wayward Five. I'm sure you've heard me call, talk about them before. They thought that they were getting in bed with a glorious general, and it turns out he was a piece of shit. Uh, but, I mean, I'm sure the gods would not deem to have the same thing happen again. No, 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 no. Of course. But that, so again, like I said, I know firsthand of, of the, the policies, the I mean, rules over us. Or over myself and my family. I'm not very familiar with this policy, but anything that can clean up this shithole, I suppose mm-hmm. I'm not opposed to. The only, the only the whole reason, the whole reason that I have that uh, my farmstead and my homestead uh, was given to my my parents. They were refugees, given by the grace of Pardon's policies. There's PPs. 
Yeah, maybe not bring up Pajin's PP when we're talking to him. <laughs> okay. Well then, let's go give Doyle the good news. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. At the moment you said Hodge's yeah, policies, Pajin's I was like, yeah. who's going to make the PP joke? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can go back inside. Um, you can see he is like sort of like sitting on the edge of the booth, just talking to the clerk that's with him, uh, seeming to like sort of almost like he's giving, giving him instructions uh, as he sees you all and he just, Ushers you back over as he's poured a glass of wine uh, for each of you. Good uh, news. As... We've uh, we've thought it over, and we definitely want to take you up on your offer. We'd be delighted to be a part of your uh, the governor's, um, you know, presentation. Excellent, extraordinary to hear. Uh, quite a last minute decision on the part of the Commodore's office uh, uh, appears that your name has been uh, spread somewhat is an official from the governor's team brought you up did, did she mention where she learned of our name maybe the newspaper or word of mouth it's Facebook, very important to get these Twitter, LinkedIn <laughs> nah, it'll nah, help us MySpace. <laughs> oh, MySpace. Uh, it was an uh, auditor of his. Anyway. <laughs> uh, is there anything you would be in need of for your your part of the presentation? Uh, Materials? You might, need to, you might need to get some props. Preachers? Uh, oh, we're, we're allowed to ask for stuff like that? Yeah. If the governor approves and there is the supply, we can help you with your presentation of strength. Uh, it's been a long time since there's been any kind of celebration like this, but in the past, for feats of strength from adventuring parties, from what I've read in the old papers, is they've fought monsters in front to show their great strength. They've uh, dueled. They've done marvelous things. Feats of magic. Well, what, uh, what this will be a center stage for you all to determine your future and your reputation amongst all of Asia and the Alftar Islands. I I slam my fit I, my glass on the uh, table and like a little bit of wine spills out. And I say, "Give us the Commodores, like straight deadpan face, nastiest, most deadly monster no, well, in his arsenal." I, actually, we are ready. Uh, we're, no, we're not going to be putting. Well, wait, 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 wait. Uh, <laughs> how about the one that tastes the best, so that we can eat it as a feast? Or a no, 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 no. Nobody's on, and also, nobody's going to put the strongest ones on the best. Stop! <laughs> stop! 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 <laughs> the, the, charcuter the charcuterie era. board. The charcuterie board comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Jacquette takes a cracker, a piece of cheese, and a piece of meat. And before he puts it in, gesticulating with it, get us a chimera. No one likes those hideous creatures. We take down one of those. They look bad enough. They're not that bad, he says, kind of more to, like to Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it should be easy enough for us to take down. That's will be a feat of strength. No? He says, asking Doyle. Oh, I suppose so. Um, I will inquire with the uh, Commodore's team to see if that is amongst his menagerie that he brings with him. Wait, so they're just going to have these monsters? just at The, the governor is uh, an eccentric man. He brings much with him when he travels for these presentations. Hmm. I doubt there's a chimera amongst his menagerie, but we can potentially get close to it. Hey, what about pudding. those things with like the lion's head and they have the big mane? Manticore. A manticore. It's a lion. Let me let me <laughs> check what the. Uh... Uh, we oh, also no, manticore is too easy. That would be a cakewalk. No one would think that that was cool. I always thought that snakes were scary. 
<laughs> you know, there's some crab people actually below the city. Let's fight them again. Oh yeah. <laughs> bring, bring Saint Pageant's uh, personal <laughs> guinea pig, <laughs> and we shall smite it. Uh, well, rumors says that he has a giant hamster amongst his menagerie. From space, Astro? they say. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> he's, a, guinea pig. he's a bit of a collector. I know well, something that is frightening that he'd be willing to part with. We will inquire with his office or see if his team can acquire something. Also, Within maybe, short notice. you know, I, it is short notice, so we'd be happy with whatever he could come up with, but it would be uh, beneficial if we had a little bit of forward uh, advance notice of what we'll be facing. Just not not to hmm. oppose, but just to give us a little bit of a tactical advantage. You know, surprise isn't really uh, something to be done in a well, situation I am... like this. We, you would not want us to put on a bad show if we are unprepared for something specifically exotic, such as a, a chimera or a manticore. Oh, the governor and the commodore, I'm sure, do not want their endorsement of you to be immediately embarrassed. So we will tell you as soon as we've acquired what you could potentially fight to impress upon the people of your skill. Uh, of Wonderful. course, this will be contained within some sort of ring uh, with the governor's gunnery uh, at arms in case things are to go unfortunate for you all. And us, if we're not doing well. No, kill the monster. Oh, Are you insane? We would not, <laughs> I, I, we would not really publicly sorry. execute you all. You've done no crime. <laughs> that you know of. <laughs> there will, of course, be a few public executions tomorrow. Oh, oh any, any uh, names to go with that? I've said too much already. I've had too much wine. I should go. No, please stay a while. <laughs> Drink with us. It's on the stay company card, this... right? And you see, like, uh, um, first of all, Doyle does not touch any of the food. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Even the void berry jam? Uh, nope. He doesn't touch any of the food. Um, he just has a little bit of the wine, or really, actually, probably more than more than the rest of you. Um, insight check, please. Um, is he? You know, you shouldn't ever drink on an empty stomach. Um, is he being affected more by this wine, like, or is he electing not to eat for another reason? Does he have a colonoscopy tomorrow? <laughs> is he pregnant? I don't think you should have wine before a colonoscopy. <laughs> no, my question was more along the lines of: Does he actually need to eat? Like, is is? Uh, like... Give me an insight check. Oh shit! Is he? Wait, did he ask to come in here? <laughs> <laughs> that is not where my mind is going. I was actually thinking undead for. Oh wow, uh, that's a twenty-seven. Uh, he does, he, well, 27, Jesus, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll give you something for that. Uh, Thanks. You know, um, there's nothing there, there's nothing No, there. there is, and I was like, this is gonna be a high DC, but that's a 20 fucking 7. Uh, uh, he actually looks disgusted by the food. Like, oh. like he, like he under, he ordered it, like, cause he knows this is good food. Mm -hmm. Um, and he did impress upon Septimus that he had good taste in the void berries, but he, he sort of like, is that, like any, like he does. Anytime he looks towards the food, it it does not sit well with him, um, and he does kind of like avoid it at all costs and only sips the wine. Does the food look bad in any way? No. And just so I get this straight, he's a clerk, right, of the governor's office or mm -hmm. commodore's office? Yes. Just a clerk. He's not like a you know royalty. I. Does he live within the Admiralty Court? Can uh, I tell? I would say you definitely can tell that he lives within the okay. Admiralty Court with the way he dresses. And okay. the the thing is, he is the he well, he is a clerk. Uh he is like the direct uh uh assistant to the Commodore. Okay. Like, like he's not um 
just sort of like oh. the manager of the clerks. Like he he is often the person who has to hear the complaints of the citizens because normally she should be hearing the direct complaints. Um, but he is directly works with the Commodore. It is he's not. The, he's Alfred. Okay. Yeah, like he has a direct relationship, so he's he's okay. definitely probably gotcha. higher up than you you, you thought. Before. Sorry, I thought he yes, I thought he was just a clerk, um, but I guess that's what the clerk that's with him is for. Yeah, like he the thing the re, it's it makes sense though that you would mistake this because he does do some work that you might think is more clerkly, right? Like listen to complaints from citizenry, right? Okay. Um, but it's mostly because those are meant to be directly given to the commodore. And right. she elects to have him be her uh, liaison there. Okay, cool. Thank you for clarifying. Okay. Um, but uh, do you have any last questions for him before he departs? Uh, where and when should we meet you on the morrow? Uh, well, the parade is set to happen uh, at noon. Uh, so we will need you uh, in Harborside. Uh, we'll, we'll say probably at the latest 11.30 in the morning. Very good. We, uh, we look forward to appeasing the governor of uh, Hyvin's Heroes. And uh, I will hopefully be able to send a courier with notice of what sort of creature you may be fighting. Or at least when we arrive, give us that information and we can mull it over while the parade goes on. Preferably a creature that will level us up to. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. You know, level us up in the eyes of the people. Yeah. Oh. So to say. You know, so they as see opposed us to as... increasing your level of power, increasing your street cred. No, uh, actually, no, le uh, no level of uh, power would power, be preferred. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll go with street cred. Ah, beggars can't be choosers. Get discounts at the shops. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> um, he uh, says final maybe, goodbyes. Maybe bye uh, bye. if you want us to look impressive, maybe if you could have some cool uniforms made up for us or... <laughs> No, no, not at all. Or... No, no, <laughs> no uniforms. There's we also... do our own look. We have enough time to possibly acquire you uh, something to fight, but definitely not enough time to have uh, tailors make up uniforms for each. Well, I guess can, suppose can we unless you were to make, wear make the crew? gunnery make uniform. <laughs> no, definitely not. No offense. Uh, just it clashes with my eyes, you know. And people do expect heroes to have their own aesthetic. It's part of exactly adventuring guilds. Iron and mana. No, we're good. Thank you so much, Doyle. None you of that. Yourself. None of that standardized uh, trash. Of the whatever that yep. heroes guild is called from Gwenvalir. Their uniforms, gaudy, really. Mm. We haven't seen any of them though in years. Hence why we're uh, inquiring you into this service. <laughs> huh. No. Okay, you can go now, Doyle. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm tired of you. Enjoy the food. And wine. Please go. Please go not to eat the food somewhere else. <laughs> Thank you. Uh oh, Alex is dying. Did them. you uh, inhale void berry? <laughs> Said it'd be very dangerous to get those stuck in your lungs. <laughs> okay, you can leave now, Doyle. All right. Farewell. Till tomorrow. Toodaloo. Goodbye. Bye, Clerk. Ta-ta. Watch out for the sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> he, gives you a, he gives you a glare as he leaves. <laughs> the Clerk opening an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you have your arrangements with the governor and commodore's offices to participate in the parade tomorrow uh, as part of the main presentation. Um, is there anything else you would like to do this evening? Jack, what? You gotta dress me. I don't know what I look like. Oh, don't worry, my friend. Don't worry. If anyone wants a glow up, 
He says, looking over at Fjern, uh, I will be more than happy to give you one. Uh, and as for that, we also need to talk about our presentation, our feat of strength, as it were. Obviously, uh, one of us, he says, patting Fjern on the back, will be taking the lead on uh, taking out the monster, but the rest of us have to look good doing it, you know? Yeah, maybe not stand so close to me when we're fighting the thing. You know, because of last time. Right. Okay. As long as it doesn't breathe fire, we should be good. Right. Um, anyway, I, I don't breathe know fire. about it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what you mean by glow up, but this, uh, this cloak definitely has seen better days as I, like, poke my finger through one of the burn holes that was, like... Yeah. Just obviously, you know, like it's very tattered and fucked up. Um, maybe. Well, we should probably fade to black and get some clothes. <laughs> yep. Yes, if you would like to do any kind of shopping for nicer, fancier attire, you may. Um, there are plenty of tailors in town that would have stuff they could fit quickly if you pay them enough for an overnight fitting. Um, and uh, you can plan out your feat of strength. Uh, simply just fight the monster they provide, or you can do other things. Um, and uh, I think uh, as you go deeper into the night, discussing your plans for the next day, uh, how you're going to impress the people of Hyven and the officials from throughout Asia, including the Commodore and the Governor and any other um people of power that will be there which there should be many uh i think that's where we're going to end tonight uh and we'll pick up next week with the governor's parade uh and your Yay. presentation um all right folks yes that's right we could do so you could do some fireworks uh thank you folks for hanging out with us um for tonight's oh, and session Mm -hmm. And Saskia's return, she got a ship for us. Yeah, Saskia <laughs> comes barreling in with a bunch of paperwork for a ship that she's inquired and and fitted uh, and, and asking, what did she miss? Is uh, it the Fisher's Prize? <laughs> oh, God. Saskia. No, it's, it's got a terrible name. <laughs> is, this a, is this a submarine? <laughs> <laughs> you stole what? <laughs> She comes in just, with a set of set of like keys, like car keys. <laughs> She's just, dude, I don't know what like, I, I talk. I talked to I talked to the craziest guy, and it's um <laughs> God, what's his name? Interdimensional man. Oh, oh, uh uh um, Felix. Felix. <laughs> you told me a crazy that you could me. motor with your feet. You just kick the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, right. It's like something called a nuclear submarine. <laughs> uh, okay, folks. We're going to send a raid on over to, let's see, we'll send it over to uh, the Total Party Chill. So go and give them some love from Paradise and join us next week as Shannon returns and we go to a parade and then our party heads out to sea. Uh, it should be a fun adventure. Uh, all right, that's all for us tonight, folks. Thank you for joining us in Paradise. We'll see you all sometime soon. Goodbye. Good.